Hello, everyone, and welcome to Under Pressure's Krill Streak. I am Weef, and I am joined by not one. Well, I was gonna say not one, not two, but I am joined by two other amazing commentators. Uh, I'm here with Broken Pinky and Jackie, and uh, for a tricast tonight, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna be here with you to the end of the night. Pinky, are you excited? You bet I'm excited. We're gonna have a nice tricast. We're gonna learn a little bit of math together, I guess. But I mean, I'm just excited for this fun little tournament. Curl Streak is a once a month series where there's a single Elim, so these matches are really gonna matter. They have a lot of weight to them. You lose and there's no second chances, so you want to make sure you can play the best of your abilities. Absolutely. Um, and it's gonna go real fast. We are these matches up uh, because you're not gonna, you know, get as much play time. Especially if you lose, uh, these are best of five all the way up until later on where it is best of seven. But we are going to be getting right into our first match here. It's going to be Aruka versus uh, Ikarioku. Jackie, do you have any thoughts on this match? Um, I'm really looking forward to see if either team brings out some interesting comps, maybe something a little off meta. We can try something out since it's just a best of one format. You know, we have like, or we've got more opportunity to see if we can surprise the other team. Absolutely. And right now we are going to see these maps in here. I believe the first map mode was Rainmaker on Museum Delphine uh, Alfonsino. Uh, absolute classic, community favorite. Uh, Pinky, I know you have some thoughts on this map. Yeah, I, I absolutely love this map. I played Splatoon 1. I'm happy to see it back. And I'm, I'm just happy to see that they kept a lot of Museum's identity. Obviously that left route is gone, but there's still a lot of options you can do with that Rainmaker. And notably, how the team interacts with that plat is, I think, really important in determining the strength of your push. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's also one of the few Splatoon 1 maps that didn't get absolutely massacred, so that's always fantastic. Uh, rest in peace to all the other ones. Never played Splatoon 1, but uh, it's a they're a shadow of their former selves. But uh, we're going to get into it really soon here, at, right as I say that. The opposite of a commentator's curse there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Jackie, do you want to tell us a little bit about what these teams are running? Uh, yeah, it looks like both teams have, like, a pretty aggressive, like, frontline-heavy comp. We're gonna see a lot of fighting and a lot of early trades, I'd, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. And, um, it looks like on the side of Aruka, they're running, uh, uh they're running, uh, some interesting weapon choices there. The Slosher is always a, uh, it's always an interesting pick, especially, you know, sharing the same kit with the T-Tech. And kind of being outclassified in some situations, obviously the Stamper, very fun to watch, but a bit of a dark horse pick right now. I wouldn't say it's much of a dark horse pick right now. Stamper's definitely been picking up a lot in usage, especially as we saw how much success it had in the 20XX series. Um, and Iruka is going to be trying to take full advantage of that. They immediately get two dead, three dead. It's just that slash in the machine that's coming from spawn. That's going to be the wipeout, and Iruka is already making a great push. And we, I don't, I mean, that's already first check when broken in 45 seconds. If you can get up onto this plat, it's very, very good for you. It's hard to break into, but once you're there, you're there, and you can really defend it here. Uh, and Jackie, we see this crab uh, on the spinner, and that does not fare well, uh, fare well for the other team. Not at all. It's got a lot of pressure, and we're going to see... Oh, never mind. I was going to say, they're going to be really good at pushing out the enemy team, but that's a wipeout, and we're maybe going to see a little bit of a comeback here for Iko Ikoyoku. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it, we're already gonna see this first check being broken in like a blink of an eye, and uh, we just saw, you know, Iruka's push be completely stopped by the Inkzuka. Oh, we're gonna see- no, no, no! <laughs> Pinky, what was that? That was- that was the Stamper being absolutely done dirty, being run over by a crab. The tables are turned, you know, Stamper is known for having a great matchup into crab, and Ikarioku just said, nah, we're gonna run into you, we're gonna embarrass you, but Ikarioku is gonna get wiped out, gonna push that down to 20, and Iruka now has to try and get a push of their own, but we I imagine they have a lot of real estate and a lot of map control to make that happen. Oh yeah, definitely. These teams were just trading uh, wipeouts here, just trading massive advantages, and you know, if the pattern continues, this looks like Iru uh, Iruka might get a sustained push here. Riley, they look like they're getting a lot of mid control, and how are they uh, gonna, you know, use this to their advantage? Um, I think right now they've got a really good job. They did a really good job of controlling the, the the paint of the map, so they're going to be able to maybe get some specials out and try to push them out and look for another push here to get a lead out. Sorry, I did not mean to call you Riley. I don't know where <laughs> that came from. <laughs> no, it's okay. But as we are talking about that, it looks like Aruka is kind of setting themselves up pretty good. 
they um, do go two down, but the crab is going to make sure that they're not going to lose too much control, uh, especially as these players do kind of jump out and are going to be pushed back. Rainmaker looks like it might get uh, picked up here in a sec. Yeah. Uh, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we see, I think it spells out Hades. I don't know. These characters are all out of whack. <laughs> as we can see, these letters are a little bit funky, and so is Aruka's playstyle, but they do have control of that Rainmaker right now. They're trying to get control on that plot, but this bucket, Yoshi on the bucket's pretty far away from the action. Trying to throw tri to stay relevant, but that crab tank is so annoying on that Rainmaker, and Aruka's just trying to get rid of it, but it's still it's still alive. The Splash jumps up the map and gets picked off, but so does the Rainmaker that Aruka is holding. And it's deep in the territory of Ikarioku, and we I can't imagine that Aruku is going to get that back. Oh yeah, um, it's it looks like their push is dead, but they do still have a minute and a half to take it back. If they do play their game patiently, uh, Jackie, I do think we could see them take the advantage back. Yeah, I think they definitely have an opportunity. They've got a, a lot of really good aggressive specials. They can maybe use a zip caster to get in there and see if they can pop the Rainmaker and look for a little push up. But right now they're getting boxed out pretty well, because... Uh, Iruka? Oh, but Iruka does have a man advantage and a couple specials out. What do you think we might see in the next uh, upcoming seconds, We. It looks like they might. Oh, wow. I was going to say they might take an advantage, but that was a preemptive uh, call there as they do get taken two down. The Rainmaker does get stopped, but it's going to take a lot for Iruka to get the advantage and the specials that they need to push forward. And Pinky, it looks like uh, they're going to be forced into over an overtime push here, which is never favorable. Yeah, we you kind of are just... The, the Lord of the Commentator's Curse, Iruka was starting as something happening, but just immediately got shut down by that machine, and now they're trying to make another push go. But oh, one does the suction bomb. Iruka's already two dead, three dead. It's just one splash alive up for them. Ikaryoku's being so good and so diligent at picking off members of Iruka, just trying to get too aggressive, and Iruka gets delayed wiped with only 20 seconds left in the game, and they have to make a play happen, Weaver. This is going to be over. Oh, yeah, it's not easy here they're gonna be playing really really defensively with this rainmaker here they don't have to push up at all they have the lead they have the advantage and with 10 seconds on the board jackie i don't think it's gonna turn out well in their favor no not at all and there's two down on iruka so oh they're just gonna run it back yep it's pretty safe play for them looks like they got the win here yep game one goes to ikari yoku yeah incredibly well played from them i mean they were able to just stay really coordinated with each other on that push they got a really strong lead at 20 points really taking advantage of their specials and getting that nice wipeout, but in the end, it was the defense of Ikarioku that was just so suffocating and made it so difficult for Iruka to break through. Oh yeah, but it was absolutely not a one-sided match here. Iruka, you know, pulling out that early lead, if they didn't get wiped there by that lucky Zuga pick, or lucky or skill, depending on how you look at it, um, it could have been ended up a lot differently with them taking the lead if they were able to play a little bit more laid back and a little bit more defensive instead of being forced to push, push, push until, you know, ad nauseum. But it looks like we are going to be going to a different Mac, uh, map mode here as it scrolls all the way across. Jackie, do you have any thoughts on this map mode? Is it going to be ink blot on clan blitz? Um, yeah, I think that this map is really interesting because you've got a lot of power in the flanks. You can take the ink rail up to the left and you can maybe even get a super jump in with a clam. So I'm looking to maybe see if there's any interesting plays we can do with, you know, players pushing from both sides at the same time to try to make a, make a push. Oh yeah. It's, um, you know, the ramp is candy, uh, it's it's a choke point, it's a choke point like no other, and uh, Pinky, you know how that goes with the uh, choke points in this game. <laughs> we saw, we uh, all saw that, those those fun little uh, map documentary videos that Squid School and Prochar put out, we all saw, we all know what's going on. What are you on. talking about? What are you cooking? <laughs> we, 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 we know, we know the issues with choke what points are you, What are you talking about? You, okay. you know what I'm talking about, you saw those videos. I, I, no, I, I don't. No, oh my I, god, living in denial. But whatever, yes, we, we do know the dangers of choke points in this game and just how difficult they are pushed through and how much special and how much coordination is required to really just kind of muscle your way through. And I mean, you really need to be able to muscle through on Inkblot because that choke point is really, really close to mid. It's pretty much right outside of it. And it's in between you and that basket. So if you need to get, a, you need you need to be diligent about pushing through it to get a substantial push. Oh yeah. Um. Also, like something worth noting uh, is how Clan Blitz functions versus Rainmaker, where Rainmaker is, you know, much more breakaway heavy. You have to really, really set up well to get on Clan Blitz. But uh, once again, Jackie, uh, what are we seeing from these teams? 
Again, we've got a really aggressive comp. We've got double crab for Ikeroku and another double crab for Aruka. So they might try to set up on the boxes and push out the enemy team. I, mean, I think Pingy has something to say about Aruka's comp. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, we have Splatoon 3. It's Double Splash Machine T Tech versus Double Splash Machine T Tech, baby. I uh, love this game. Um, Aruka decided that they were done losing with a quirky comp and decided to go for something a bit more standard out here as we go right into it. Uh, now these teams are just going to be fighting out for mid. And what are we seeing here, uh, uh, Jackie? Seeing an early crab and one down for both teams, but right now, oh, that looks like another pick, and we might see a push coming out for Ikaruyoku. Oh yeah, they are starting to get really good control here. Um, you know, cornering off that splash, cornering off the other, you know, getting the picks that they need, getting it. Looks like their clam economy is really good favor, and you know, uh, they're already getting it in. Piki, what are we seeing here? I mean, we're seeing Ikaruyoku being very aggressive with this push, but unfortunately, that means that they're pushing without having a whole lot of support and a whole lot of control. And that kind of leaves their push falling flat at 80 points, and now the splash is getting chased out as, as uh, Yuruka, I'm sorry, <laughs> is um, starting to file back into their plat and trying to take a bit more control. But Ikaryoku is still there applying pressure. All the team members are respawned, and now it's being really hard for Yuruka to move. Oh yeah, uh, these teams' names are very easy to confuse. However, they're they're the same, but they're different. But you know, uh, that doesn't change the fact that we are still seeing. Uh, Aruka kind of far back in their base. Aruka is not putting back the pressure, and we're going to see, uh, Jackie, how that benefits them as they do go back into neutral. Yeah, it looks like oh, it looks like Aruka is um, already got a special advantage of. But just as I was about to say that, the Sloshian is dead, and it's one to one. So we're going to see a pretty stalematey game right here. I think whoever can get their specials out and get a good push first, maybe a couple picks, will come out on top in this situation. Looks like Ikaruyoku does have the numbers advantage yet again. Uh, special on the board, that crab tank gonna do so much work, and uh, looks like uh, we might see it pop out here relatively soon. Yep, there it is. Uh, Bria Bomb coming out. So many special coming out, and Piki, we're gonna see how they turn this into a strong push, hopefully. Yeah, they're trying to make something happen, but they don't have a whole lot of clamps. That Slash has three, but they don't have a whole lot of control of the plat, but now all of Ikaryoku is starting to file in. That crab's gonna get targeted with the Bria Bomb, but it's still gonna be, a it's still gonna live. Right now, Ikaryoku's push is stalled at 55, and it looks like that's where it's going to stay as the basket closes, but notably, Iruka has not been able to break through Ikaryoku whatsoever. Ikaryoku's done an amazing job dictating the pace of this match, and we, as we enter the second half, it's going to be interesting to see how Iruka can really just try to break through the momentum and the pace that Ikaryoku has been setting. Oh yeah, definitely. It's look at you know, uh, Ikaryoku is just really forcing uh, Iruka into some unfavorable matchups where they're you know taking two v ones or uh, going into specials, going into weapons they might not be you know well suited to go up against, low health, that kind of thing. Just doing a very good job of staying coordinated. And uh, Jackie, we're gonna see if you know finally Iruka can maybe make a push back into mid after all this time. Yeah, but it looks like Ikaryoku's got a really good map advantage. They've got they've got more paint, they've got their specials up, and they're starting to get a couple picks too, so we might see another push coming up from them. I love seeing the uh, the crab melee death for the second time in this set, which is a little bit quirky. That's not what happens too often. But yeah, we are seeing Ikaryoku break open that basket, getting pushed down all the way to 43. It looks like they are starting to back off, but it's anyone's game being to see if uh, Iruka is going to be able to get back out. But now with the machine! The machine! Do they know? Does he know? Does he know? Here he comes, out of the cover, out of the cover! They need to get, pick, one? get one pick. Oh, oh! Only one pick and an assist for their troubles. But you know that double would have been instantly Twitter clipped. So unfortunate, but still, that still maintains the pressure that Ikaryoku has. It feels like Aruka just doesn't feel safe being anywhere because I Ikaryoku just pops out from anywhere and just immediately deals with them. And right now, Ikaryoku, we see the this way coming from their T-Tech because they know they have a lot of real estate right now. They have a lot of power to get on their plat and we're getting to the last minute of this game and things are looking rough for Iruka right now. Oh yeah, that T-Tech try striking in the base in a really weird spot, but it's still making it work. The crab tanks coming out. All of these specials, Jackie, are looking to, you know, really foretell a strong push from them once again. Yeah, but it's not quite over yet. Maybe if Iruka can start building specials, get a little bit of control back, and they would need a lot of clams as well. So they'd, they'll have to take the game a little slower, even though it's, it's, it's almost over. But they just, they could still come back here. Ooh, we see uh, a great bomb kill as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I need to stop saying that. Um, <laughs> we, you know, Aruka, it's starting to look a lot better for them. They have two crab tanks. They have all of their specials out at one point or another. 
they are making clams, you know, they had the power clam, but it looks like the splash is coming from behind to take Ooh. a member out and, you know, just stagger their team. This is a last second push here, and Pinky, it doesn't look like they're going to make anything come out of it and be forced into overtime here. Yeah, and they don't have any clams whatsoever. That clam kind of reads zero. They just have the pity by their basket. They're going to finally pick it up, but things are just looking so rough for Iruka here. They're so far away. Ikaryoku's just taking advantage of them, needing to run forward. Two of them are being distracted by this Booyah, and while the Booyah gets shredded, that's still enough to distract and uh, just stall a little more time, and I don't think Iruka has the time, and yeah, Iruka, or Ikaryoku's going to go up 2-0 well in the set versus Iruka. Yeah, I talked about the difference between Rainmaker and Clamlets, and uh, that was that. That's what that was. Just uh, the ability of Ikaryoku to just consistently keep the pressure going, not having to focus on a you know a very slow moving, vulnerable objective, and just kind of being able to push more freely and just focus on just taking the plat. Kind of kind of helped them there, but. Uh, uh, Jackie, do you have any thoughts on that match? Like, just what we saw there, how much more dominant it was? Yeah, well, I think that whole set, Ikaryoku had a great defensive play. They were doing a stellar job of shutting the other team out and, you know, keeping control and keeping their advantage the entire time and not, you know, giving up a foot in the battle. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, uh, you know, that was only game two, and even though it is going to be match point here, as these are best of five, Aruka could definitely take it back here if they really get their defense together and to start, you know, figuring out a way to suppress the suppressive uh, offense and defense of Ikaryoku as we go on to Splat Zones Mako Mart. Uh, any, any thoughts on either of you? This is the true neutral of Splatoon 3 for the Nintendo Switch, as, as we often hear touted, but I mean, yeah, Zones Mako is definitely a very test of skill map usually the better team is going to win and right now Ikarioka has been showing themselves a dominant force and Iruka really has to pull it together here and start making this reverse sweep happen but Jackie do you have any thoughts on the stage yeah I'm really interested to see where they go with their comps because I think that Mako Mart is a map that um, backliners can do really well on but we haven't seen a backliner played yet this game so we might see something like a, a Hydra or an Eliator really able to control the game from this from the perches yeah, uh, I mean, but also just as, you know, they have some great sidelines, but they're also really vulnerable. There's not too many spots on this map that, can, that they can stand uncontested. But it also, I don't think we've seen a backline yet from either of these teams, so it will be interesting to see if they do pull one out here. But uh, it's it's definitely anyone's game to see what they run. Uh, if we're going to see a Splatoon 3 meta moment once again. But uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna go into it real shortly here. Just waiting on waiting on the ready ups. And here's hoping this this meta is gonna change just a little bit as we go to the next patch. And I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, any thoughts on what we're seeing? Aww. <laughs> um, I don't even know what I saw to be honest well, with you, Pinky. What, what are you talking about? I, I blinked and yeah, I, I you know what, I think I, I think it was just yeah, you know what? I think Yippee is, is a good. I, I would say this is a Yippee moment. I would say that's a, absolutely a Yippee moment. Yeah. Certified, certified classic. Uh, once again, uh, you know, Jackie, what are we, what are we seeing from these teams? Oh, we're oh, oh we we are bringing out a slosher again. I I believe we saw in the first game, and a, oh, and a stamper and a slosh for the other teams. So we've got a little bit more versi uh, variety in the picks that we're going since last game. Yeah. Uh, I guess the, the slosher does kind of work well with the really abundance of off angles on the stage, and now we're gonna see uh, players start to pair up and take these fights. It looks like, uh, you know, Ikaryoku is going to be dominant once again here, Pinky. Yeah, Ikaryoku's already off to a good start, but not quite winning this team fight yet. Nice, but Ikaryoku gets the opening pick on the T-Tag. That's two dead for Iruka and Ikaryoku. Three dead. It's just that splash about a cold and crab all the way in spawn. Probably forced to jump out, and Ikaryoku opening us up immediately, Weef, and they are making a strong charge for this KO. I don't know if you saw, but that slosher went immediately here. Uh, you, you know, uh, Ikaryoku has the momentum that they need, and uh, Jackie, we will see if they're able to ride it to this KO. Absolutely, yeah. And like you said, the is doing a great job controlling those ledges and trying to, you know, splat people before they can even get a chance to fight back. Uh, yeah, oh, crab tank, crab on crab violence here, but it is going to be forced out and threatened by that Zipcaster. Looks like all but one on the side of Aruka are dead, uh, Pinky. It's looking pretty good for Ikaryoku right now. 
Yeah, Ikariyaku's a few down, but that zone timer's taken, taken oh so fast. Now it's below 10 points. It's about 5 seconds now away from this knockout, and Ikariyaku just has to hold a little bit longer, but Iruka's making a push. They get 3 down, and they get the cap themselves, and they're able Ooh. to stay alive a little bit longer in the set. Weave, what do you think we can see from this hold from Iruka? I think we can see them make it work here. We have the crab tank coming out on the left side, going to be able to pretty, like, suppress that other side pretty, pretty well. Another crab coming out, this time from the opposite side, Zipcaster. All the specials coming out and ensuring that Ikaryuku remains two down. Uh, Jackie, do we think we're going to see a continued push here, or do you I think, think that so. Ikaryuku is uh, going to hold out for longer? We Well, we we saw one uh, another person down and a special up for Ikaryuku, so I thought it was going to be advantageous, but Ikaryuku is doing a great job of pushing back in, getting their specials, and pairing up to try to find these picks. Oh, yeah. Zone timer, taken down fast. Uh, we got uh, on the side of Ikaruku, we see some specials starting to come out. The crab is ready, but so is this uh, from the side of Iruka. But unfortunately, Pinky, for Iruka, they, the zone gets taken away from them in a uh, tragic, tragic tale. Yeah, Ikaruku is just so solid. As Jackie's been pointing out, they're just being very patient, doing a very good job of just building up their specials and making sure that they pair up. and. Oh, but right now it's kind of backfiring on them. It's just the ten to take a life for Ikaryoku. Forced to retreat just a little bit, but not giving up too much space intelligently. But that T-Tech goes down, and that's going to be the zone flip for Iruka once again. And we've, we're into the second half of the game, and Iruka is not out yet. Yeah, this is a hefty penalty that they're going to have to make their way all the, like, all the way through. But this zone timer ticks at a very, very fast rate. A lot faster than a lot of people appreciate. And it looks like the double crab gets popped out to try to deal with the zip caster, but the zip caster unfortunately does not get the pick as they go down, and that's gonna be a wipeout for Iruka. Uh, Jackie, you know, how is this gonna fare out? They still got a lot of time to tick down, so I think that Iruka's still got a chance if they, you know, avoid these specials here and try to, you know, get a good push back in. Looks like it's not gonna happen anytime soon, though, with all but one member going down. T Tech does eventually get picked off. Only They're about 15 up. seconds before this becomes a KO here. Pinky, do we think we can see Iruka take it back? I think we can. These specials are starting to come out. Iruka's knowing that this is their last chance, but they're able to get the numbers advantage. They're starting to get the paint, and they do get the cap. There's about a minute and 15 seconds left in this game before overtime, and Iruka really has to make every second count. Getting that pick on that T-Tick is a great way to start in the splash matic setting up on that uh, left stack area. Crab on crab bottoms from across the zone, but it's not going to be enough as Iruka's crab gets pressured off and Ikaryuku is able to take the zone back, Weave. It looks like the, we were talking about their defense and it just is extremely solid. Two more down on the side of Iruka. That's going to be basically the lead, but it was only the stamper down on that field here. Not looking good. There's so little time left in this game. Jackie, do we think they can make one last push out of this? I think they definitely can. Since up until now, we thought it wasn't going to be possible, but they still managed to push back in a couple times. They go, oh, but no, it's over. It ended. That's I just how fast that zone timer ticks, man. Yeah. Two per second, two per second, you know, at that end there, was, you know, 10 seconds before the KO. It's insane. But that is going to be the uh, the 3-0 on the, from Ikaruku onto Iruka. Taking it in a very dominant but yet not uncontested uh, show of display. But unfortunately, Iruka is going to be knocked out here, ending their Krill streak. Sorry, that was corny. I just had to. Um, <laughs> do we have any thoughts on, on this set, uh, just in general? I mean, in general, Ikaruka just did an amazing job of establishing control and really controlling the tempo and the pace of the game in a way that worked best for them. Obviously, no game showed that better than game two, where Ikaryoku was in control pretty much right from the word go and was, again, setting the pace of the match for what favored them most. And while Iruka was able to get some good moments here and there in games one and three, Ikaryoku was able to stay composed and stay sturdy throughout this whole set. Yeah, they did a fantastic job. Uh, but that is going to be it from us for just ra right now. We have another match coming very shortly, but we will see you all then.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Under Pressure Curl Streak. The TriCast is back. My name is Broken Pinky. I am joined here with Jackie and Weave. And we're going to be going on to round two of this tournament. And Jackie, what do you think of things as we're starting out right off the bat here in round two? You know, I we saw a great first game. There was there was only um, it was a 3-0, but there was still some back and forth, and there were some good fights to be watched there. And I'm hoping that we see some more really good fights in this set. Yeah, exactly. And we're probably going to see a good bit of it. We have Sandwich versus Frostbite here. Weef, what do you think of this matchup as, as we're going to the top 16? Well, I know Sandwich is a pickup made of some, up of, uh, I believe it's a pickup made up of, up of some pretty strong players, but Frostbite is a force to be working with, an established team with some very, very good players on it. So it's going to be, you know, uh, interesting to see where it goes. Uh, definitely, like, the, the synergy between a established team that's been working together for forever and the kind of more laid back, uh, less coordinated nature of a pickup, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, Ricky. Yeah, absolutely. And we're in round two, so these are still some best of fives. But Frostbite, as you mentioned, Weef, is just an incredibly solid team and well, well established. And Sandwich, you know, being that pickup might be a little intimidated, but I mean, hey, you can just have fun. You can flex on some people, and something just might work out a little bit in bracket. And here we see these maps going on. Game was going to be on Clamless Museum Dolphonsino. Jackie, what do you think of this stage? I, I think for this stage, we're going to see people really using the spinners and maybe trying to get some high ground off of them to make some good pushes. Yeah, exactly. The, the high ground that the spinners provide and just the rotation and the cycles and whatnot is just such a powerful asset if you can position yourself correctly with the right specials. Weef, what do you th think some of the things we might see on the stage? Um, Just some, like, really... We saw it on Rainmaker in the last set a little bit where... You have to, once you have control of the spinner area, it's basically game over for defense in terms, not necessarily game over, but it's going to be a lot harder to flush the enemy team out, but it's it's hard to get up there. You only have one good route and one route that you only want to take when you already have the control with that block there on the left side. But yeah, just uh, hopefully we'll see some good defense, some good offense, some good back and forth, and some beautiful, beautiful sustained pushes like I always love to see from uh, Clan Blitz. Exactly, and I feel like Clamless Museum is a map mode that is won and lost on that defense because it is so daunting to break through that choke point of that plat with that giant spinner in your way. But if you can break through that, if you can get a wipeout or two, you can get a really strong sustained push going. And I'm just excited to see what's going to happen. But Jackie, do you have any sort of final thoughts before you up in? What are some fun stuff oh, you're going to see? Well, oh, it looks I like we're getting into the game. We're awesome. looking at. Looking at the comps, we've got oh we've got a really interesting comp. Holy we've got shit. an arrow spray and we've got an octo brush. And a, oh and oh no that the, the only metal weapon I can see here is a splash. So I really want to see how this team turns out. Yeah, this is definitely an interesting comp from Sandwich. Just trying to mesh together some interesting receives. Meanwhile, Frostbite going with that double splash for right now. Things are going right in favor of Sandwich here, and they're setting themselves really strong on that flat weave. And you know this might be a good push going right off the bat. Pure aggression from that Octobrush holding forward. It is less than 30 seconds into the game, ladies and gentlemen, and we are already seeing Sandwich go for it, getting the clams and dominating. They almost have the big bubble ready on this Swiffer. We're going to see if, um, you know, they can, you know, as this leader comes back out and this crab comes out, if they can make something with this bubble. Uh, let's, let's see how it goes, Ricky. Yeah, exactly. Sandwich has is going for broke. They have nothing to lose in 45 seconds. They got it down to 53 points, which is quite a strong opening push. And Frostbite is now forced to retaliate, but they're starting to retaliate strong. That leader is set up high up in the sky. And Jackie, what do you think we're going to see as Frostbite tries to retake mid and push forward? Right now, Frostbite's got three specials up and Sandwich has no none. So we might have four specials now and a pick. So we're probably going to see a big push here if they can find the clams for it. Yeah, exactly. They have the Zipcaster online. They have the Crab online. One Crab just got popped. The Zipcaster got popped. Crab gets a pick. Two are dead on the side of Sandwich. And now we Frostbite is starting to file into the platform, but they don't have a lot of clams. Massive momentum swing here. You know, Frostbite, they saved a clam, or not a clam, but they saved a crab for this moment here uh, as they are going to be trying to get back in again. But look at that arrow spray. Look at them going for it. The splash gets the Clammon flipping Frostbite on their head, confusing them. They are We are playing a backwards game right now as Frostbite has to fight to get back from mid into their own base. And Piggy, I think that's beautiful. 
<laughs> this is a beautiful, beautiful game. That Aerospray going on a magical journey all the way to that Clam Basket. And Sandwich, seeing that they're up against Frostbite, one of the, one, a very strong and very established team. And they are not scared whatsoever. They are willing to do whatever it takes. And Jackie, Frostbite starting to move forward. But do you think Sandwich is even scared at this point? Well, like you said, even though they're they're a pickup, they've actually got a really good coordination so far this game. So honestly, they they're looking pretty comfortable. They're sitting here with a great lead, and tw and uh, they just have to defend a couple more pushes here. Yeah, and I mean their offense has been really strong, but their defense has not really been tested yet. We just saw that breakaway, but here comes Frostbite trying to file in and weave. That basket is broken right now. But here comes the Octopus who does get picked off. Looks like it's a bit of a momentum swing, um, like we saw earlier, and now there's no uh, crazy out of the out of this world flank to really stop Frostbite in their tracks, which now we're seeing how strong they are. Got it all the way down to 34, continuing to push. They have so many clans on the board. Finally, they are going to go three down, but that was an absolutely insane one basket. One basket broken, 80 points scored. Frostbite absolutely showing what they're worth and showing that they are getting used to the gimmicky weirdness of Sandwich's comp right now. Yeah, I mean, the idiosyncrasies of these kinds of comps, I mean, just the off meta, you, you would never expect to see a golden arrow spray and a Swiffer putting up this kind of a fight, but Frostbite's starting to adjust to it, and I mean, that's what makes them such a strong team, is that they're able to adapt and stay, you know, reliable against pretty much everything, and now Sandwich is going to struggle to break through, and Jackie, there's only a minute and a half for them to get his lead back. However, Octobrush going on a magical journey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are they? Oh like my god! Oh, no way! 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 Uh, Sandwich being one of the most entertaining teams to watch that I've ever seen, pulling out all of the weird flanks, weird pushes that they just see an opening and they take it. But you know, it's not over yet. Frostbite looking pretty scary here. E leader position on mid. Thinking, how do we think that this is gonna go? I don't know, man. This is terrifying for Sandwich right now. There's a lot of power clamps in control of Frostbite right now. But the Booty Bomb's going to get thrown by the basket. You're going to stall time a little bit longer. That, that, that power clamp held by this leader is trying to make its way to that basket. But it's so difficult. This defense from Sandwich is actually incredibly strong. And with 30 seconds left, Frostbite unable to take the lead. And Jackie, we might be going into an overtime here. What do you think we're going to see? It looks like it. I think we're going to see a lot of or a lot of Frostbite trying to build specials for their last push. They already got a pick advantage, and they just popped a crab tank, so they might be able to make something happen here. Yeah, Frostbite's trying to be patient here, but they only have 30 seconds to do that, including the overtime timer. But they got the pick on the Octobrush, and now they're starting to make their way into that flat. This is a terrifying spot for Sandwich. Weave. What do you think we're going to see? Oh, we yeah. see the Squiffer get a beautiful pick. Two picks. That's the Crab Tank coming out and de uh, defending as well as they can. It's the E leader on the left side and the 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 Stamper is trying desperately to save the clan, but you know it's only five seconds left before they have to score it. And that Squiffer just putting up the absolute work. Sandwich putting on an absolute show and taking game one. What in God's name was that? <laughs> what an absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous start to the set. I don't I don't think there's a single person that expected that to happen and it did Sandwich breaking the basket open three times versus frostbite with two amazing breakaways getting so many power clamps And they go up 1-0 in the set Jackie. Yeah at the start of the game We were wondering what their plan was gonna be with their Interesting comp to say the least and they made it work. They pulled it off They had an insane flank from the octo brush that really helped them pull together that final push yeah, exactly, and now they're up 1-0 in this set, but we cannot get too hasty. This, this is the best of five set. Frostbite is known to be a strong team, but we know Sandwich can compete. And now we're going to be taking it over to game two on Zone's Hagglefish. We, what are some of your thoughts on the stage? Uh, you know, you know I'm a big fan of Zone's Hagglefish. It's because I'm a backline player, and it's miserable for everyone but backline players. But we are going to see just a really... Okay, so we have an E leader on the side of Frostbite, but on the side of Sandwich, you just have like pure, raw, weirdness, aggression, he flank heavy. And so Game we're just gonna see. Yeah, and maneuverability. And we're gonna see if uh, Frostbite is gonna be able to deal with that once again on a map that does favor backlines just as much as, uh, you know, Museum does. 
Yeah, and I think that Golden Air Spray should have come back. It's actually going to be kind of annoying for Frostbite because it's just going to be spamming Guia Bombs and getting a ton of pain on that zone, especially with that Sprinkler. And I don't know, this could be kind of, this could be annoying for Frostbite. I'm sure they did not expect to, you know, be challenged like this. And now they might start getting miffed a little bit. And Jackie, how do you think they're going to like sort of respond and adapt to this? Well, I think the E-Leader is going to do a really good job at least watching for those flanks. We saw last game, the Octobrush had a really good flank. We had a lot of like good, sneaky plays going on. And Hagglefish is a map that really, really does well with flanking weapons. You can go around the side, so I'm hoping that you know maybe the E-Leader will do a, a decent job at shutting that down. Yeah, I mean, the onus is on this leader because Hagglefish is an amazing map for leader. There's so many open sidelines, but you have to hit your shots in order to be worthwhile but here we go game two between sandwich and frostbite here in round two of this tournament sandwich not changing up whatsoever and frostbite often to stick with what's working and we how do you think this match is going to open up oh my god we're going to see last match we saw immediately the octobrush push forward immediately the splash and the air spray pushing forward and looks like that's exactly where they're going uh you know junkie on that brush immediately going left uh getting out of the sideline that everyone and they don't know, actually, the Stamper does know, but it's gonna get picked out anyway. <laughs> the Brush absolutely tearing it up, Mickey. Look at this! They're just oh living and they do jump out, but they just put so much pressure and just disrupt Frostbite's entire game plan so much that a uh, really, really effective, you know, flank from them. Sandwich played this opening incredibly intelligently, conceding zone opening up and letting Frostbite be the one to walk forward, and they were able to punish it pretty well, but Frostbite still has a lot of control of the zone, Jackie, and it's going to be kind of hard for Sandwich to break through with their comp. Yeah, Frostbite's got a little bit of the advantage now. They've got specials, and they've got players on the board, so I want to see if they can push Sandwich out and maybe get a little bit of a lead here. Yeah, the Samper trying to go for some perk up plays underneath that tent. Gets the pick on the Octobrush, that's that's a big pick because that's a lot of Sandwich's offense gone. They have the Bubbler and the Booyah Bomb present, but I'm not sure how useful they're going to be in such a severe disadvantage, but now Sandwich has their crab, but Frostbite pushing the zone timer down even lower, but this crab is getting picked on the Stamper, and we, how do you think this retake is going to happen from Sandwich? I mean, it's two down on both sides, but the retake is going to happen. Uh, right now, it's the Eater and that Crab Tank, both two incredibly strong forces. But the Eater is going to get taken out. The Splash gets, uh, you know, a valuable trade, even though they do end up going down in the end. Booyah Bomb's going to come out. It looks like this might not be the sustained push that Sandwich was hoping for, uh, but it looks like they are starting to get their barons together, starting to get the the numbers that they need, and just generally just holding out as far as they can as the zone timer ticks down ever so slowly. Yeah, but I think what's notable is that Sandwich is not getting a lot of picks here. Frostbite's been really good at making sure that Sandwich go two down, three down, even get wiped out at certain points, but I feel like Sandwich is not responding back with as much offense as they were in the last game. And I think it's just because this comp kind of struggles with Zone's Hagglefish. What do you think of this situation, Jackie? Yeah, it's looking it's looking like a, a Frostbite's got a pretty decent advantage here, but we do see two specials coming out on the side of Sandwich, and they're going to maybe try to take back control here. Yeah, trying to get some control, but instead they go two down and Frostbite holding a strong hold and there's only 20 points left in the zone timer. At this point, it's about 10 seconds left for this not going to happen and Sandwich is just trying to hold on for dear life, but Frostbite is having so much control in mid. The Brush trying to come on zone, trying to just contest it by themselves, but it's not enough and Frostbite takes a very solid game too. What, that is the exact opposite of what we saw in that last game. Well, not necessarily because Frostbite has some really strong pitches there. But it looks like Sandwich is real breakaway, aggressive, heavy, you know, flanking, getting at those weird off angles and disrupting Frostbite's, like, just general mental and focus on the objective. Didn't really, it wasn't really as effective on Splat Zones as it was on that clan blitz there. So, uh, really going to be interesting to see how they go on. Yeah, I feel like Sandwich's playstyle from game one lends itself most to breakaway plays on modes like Rainmaker and Clan Blitz, but now they're going to be tested on tower control after being tested on zones and specifically on tower control flounder jackie what are some of your thoughts on this stage uh this stage is has a, is really interesting because it's got a really big disparity in height so it can be kind of easy to push people out when you're pushing for those first couple checkpoints so you can you know pop your specials early and get a really good solid push at the beginning but it's harder to finish off the game so we'll see how how well these teams can push yeah, and Jackie, sorry to throw it back to you real quick, but I was just wondering, what are your thoughts on the comps of these teams and how, you know, what they've been running bears on Flounder? 
You know, I think I think that um, Frostbite might have a little bit of an advantage here because you know they're running a little bit more range, and the crab tanks are going to be extremely helpful for helping uh, cover all the parts where they could uh, the sandwich could push back in. But the Squiffer is also a really good weapon on this map. You have your bubble, so you can help push the tower, and you have enough range that you can deal with people when you're defending. So I'm really interested to see how the rest of this game goes. Yeah, exactly. I feel like Sandwich has some has some heat for this stage. You know, some of their weapons are really strong. We've seen Octopus being pulled out at quite a few times. Splash is, of course, ever strong. And yeah, I think it's a good point that you brought up the Squiffer, especially since Sandwich is doing quite a few solid specials on tower control. We haven't seen Frostbite really pull out that bubble, but they might pull it out just with this tower. Reef, do you think there's going to be any changes to Frostbite's comp as we go into game three? I don't know. I, as a backline player myself, I don't think that um, things like E-Leader fare too well on this stage. There's not that many places you can stand where you're safe, but also affecting the game. So we could see a switch off of that, even though it is very powerful. If they do manage to get a good push going, you know, the E-Leader is going to be amazing at holding at that, you know, at that angle where they can see the entirety of the enemy's court, but we'll just see what we're seeing here. Yeah, and we're gonna get right into it. Game three, both of these teams are one and one in this best of five series. The leader stays, but the stammer's gonna be traded out for a machine. Sandwich not sticking with, not changing their comp whatsoever. And Jackie, how do you think this game is gonna open up? I'd like to see a lot of early aggression coming in from Sandwich like last game, and maybe they can start off with getting a good push, because after, the, uh, after they get a push out, they can get their specials out, and I think their specials fare really well on tower control. But we already see two people going down on side of Sandwich. Yeah, Frostbite doing incredibly well in this opening team fight, and Splash is trying to get around, but gets picked off by the arrow spray. Huge defense from Sandwich there, trying to just protect this checkpoint. This arrow spray is going forward. They see blood with the leader, but they turn around and see the machine right behind them. Oh, but the arrow spray gets caught out, and it looks like Frostbite has another open window to push. Weave, how do you think they're going to take advantage of this? I mean, it's not exactly open. Look at uh, how mid is painted in that nice green color. It's pretty well evenly contested, each each team holding their own. Aerospray is going to unfortunately get picked off of the Booyah Bomb, and the brush is going to go down, and now this is their opening to push, but the Splash has something to say about that. No, they don't. Never mind. Hey, it looks like Frostbite's Crab has something to say. They pop, They have that Crab thing online. Well, one, one of them popped the Crab, and the other one is holding it to extend this push, and right now, Sandwich is getting staggered right now pretty heavily. That Booyah Bomb is going to be thrown on tower to try and delay things a little bit. But, Jackie, what do you think Sandwich can do to really try and stop those aggression from Frostbite here? I think a Booyah Bomb close to the tower, like we saw right there, could be good for trying to get some chip damage in. And then also, we have the, we can get a Crab Tank going on. Maybe, uh, you know, counter their Crab Tanks, defend a little. And maybe even a bubble, right, a little to create some space for them. Because it looks like they don't have any opportunities to do anything at the moment. Yeah, nice trade from that arrow spray onto that splash matic but unfortunately the rest of Sandwich, other than that Octopus is dead, that's going to be Sandwich being completely wiped out, and Frostbite has a golden window to push right now, and we Frostbite's already making an incredible push to that third checkpoint. Do you think we're going to see a knockout here? I, I think it's very likely. This is such a snowballing stage, and from where Frostbite is positioned, it's going to be so, so hard for Sandwich's comp to break the difference. We have about a few seconds left. But there is a, con a bit of contestant. Um, looks like two of the members of Frostbite do get picked. It's just that Splash and that leader out there. Splash gets taken out in a trade, and the leader is going to be forced out pretty far here. Oh, more members get taken out. It's only this E-leader after all this time. And so Sandwich finally seeing the opening between the clouds and as uh, they start moving forward and being sure to shark on those ledges as much as they can. They're really looking to take this as far as they can. Brush already going in with Zip as, you know, far as possible just trying to eke out any advantage and try to get that snowball going yeah they're trying to get that momentum going on their side they're at that first checkpoint but some of the members are going down and now frostbite's trying to reach that tower frostbite can seize the first checkpoint but frostbite's three dead it's just the machine alive actually and it looks like sandwich is going to be using this momentum to try and push through that second checkpoint it's just the machine there to try and stop it but the machine gets taken out frostbite's coming from spawn jackie how do you think this push is going to pan out this could be a great comeback uh uh, Sandwich has an incredible positioning advantage here, and it looks like the Octobrush might even be able to get a pick with the Zipcaster special. Whoa, 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 just one bit to trade. But they're still pushing, they're still trying to make it work. They've got a Crab Tank up, and it's 2v3, so it's Crab versus Crab, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, but unfortunately, the Crab War goes in favor of Frostbite. Sandwich so close to getting this lead, it's 14 to f right now. They're through all three checkpoints, they just could not quite get. 
far enough on that track, and now that tower is moving closer and closer to mid, and Frostbite is starting to move forward, but this Octobarge trying to shark, trying to get some, some people picked, but forcing this trench and weave. I don't know how Sandwich is going to respond to this. Yeah, unfortunately, all they had to do was not, you know, not go down, not give up that mid control, and they will, they, you know, might have another opportunity to push here, but with a minute left on the map, it's going to be hard to get that momentum back, to build the specials, and to get the, you know, golden opportunity that they need to get this KO here. But we are going to see them just scrap it out in mid as best they can. Big pick on the leader, two and two, and his brush is going to keep on going. Uh, that's three down on the side of Frostbite. Sandwich is still in it. They are not going down easy. Yeah, this Octobarge player is playing incredibly right now. I think that was a streak of four kills, maybe? I don't even know, but this Octobarge is making things happen for Sandwich right now. Spearheading this push, and Sandwich has 40 seconds to make something happen. Octobarge Zipcaster comes out. The Booyah Bomb comes out. Bobblers probably probably already came out. The Crab is popped. Jackie, this is Sandwich's last hurrah for this lead. The last moments of the game, and we're seeing three down for Sandwich. For the frostbite is this might be it. This looks like oh, what a great snipe of the elite. It's held that too. There we go. The knockout. That was a knockout. What a great comeback. Sandwich never giving up in the face of danger, in the face of death, in the face of frostbite, and unbelievably, Sandwich is at match point up two one against frostbite, taking game three and waving him off right there. Sandwich has an unbelievable amount of Riz just from their weird comp. Their, I'm, I'm just gonna say it right now, the sh movement on that arrow spray, I was watching the entire time. They are insane. God bless. I have never knew people could make things work so much with an arrow spray. But it just goes to show that if, if you, uh, you can make anything work as long as you have the skill to back it up. But yeah, it's looking good for them. You know, they have momentum and I bet they're gonna do well on Rainmaker. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it before how Sandwich really excels at breakaway modes. We saw how they were playing on Clamlets. Rainmaker is going to work for them, but it's going to be Rainmaker on Eeltail, a map notorious for being strong for leader. Jackie, what do you think of this matchup on Rainmaker Eeltail? Um, I th I think that it's going to there's a lot of choke points in this map, right? So there's you have to go to the either the bridge or the ramp to get a decent push out, and I want it's going to be really interesting to see which team does a better job at holding those choke points and trying to defend. Yeah, exactly, and getting a strong defense on this map is crucial because it can just be so explosive. It's It feels like everything on this map is so close together and if you just get the right kills or if you fake out people in the right way, it can be so snowball heavy and weak. Do you think we're gonna see any of that here from either side? I don't know, I just, uh, you know, with how much Sandwich brings raw aggression, raw flanking, just energy, so never stop, you know, just, uh, they just keep the pedal to the metal with how they play. I think Rainmaker is a mode that suits them very, very well, like I said, so I think, uh, I think they have it, you know, pretty good here, but Eeltail is a wet spaghetti in the middle of a map, uh, five feet across, you can touch both ends with your fingertips. And so we're going to see a lot of domination from that crab and from that uh, that E-leader here on this map that I bet we're going to see. Yeah, here we go. This is Sandwich versus Frostbite. Sandwich is at match point. Frostbite pulling out that splatter scope for that ink vac as well as that chainsaw coming back out in place of that machine. And how do you, how do you think this pop is going to open up, Jackie? Um, it, I don't know, it looks to me like, oh, never mind, Frostbite already got the pop and got a pick with it, so they're gonna have a lot of early advantage, uh, a little special advantage as well, and they might be able to make an early push here. Yeah, this Charger's trying to get some start on this bridge, that Splatter Scope, so incredibly mobile, so incredibly fast, and it's a great Rainmaker carry when it is not holding that ink back, but it's kind of hard for Frostbite to get any picks out of Sengura's really trying to get picks, but... Sandwich is being so evasive, their weapons just have so high mobility that it's kind of hard for a charger to zero in weave. Oh yeah, especially with the scope making it, you know, for some players a little bit more unwieldy. We're already seeing, um, I don't know, like, even though they do have the advantage, like, uh, that big bubbler is going to cause a bit of mayhem kind of blocking the buff. Beautiful <laughs> pick on the crab tank, that's what you love to see. And uh, narrowly evading the Rainmaker right now, you know, the Rainmaker is going to start to get collapsed on and end their push pretty early here. That is unless Fro uh, Sandwich goes three down. Uh, still going to try to die for it, though, but that's not looking good for Sandwich. Yeah, Sandwich is just trying to die for this Rainmaker, but 
this Rainmaker is still alive. Reborn is not going to be undead. And that's going to be that first checkpoint gone for Frostbite. And now they really have to stay alive for this push. They have a vac right behind them. Sandwich is going to get this pop. But the Booyah Bomb comes out. Jackie, do you think this push is going to keep going? I think so. Sanders have a really hard time defending so far this game. They've had a great job with the aggression this set, but it's looking like they're they're not as well suited for the defense. And we see a great push from Frostbite getting a lead to 18. Yeah, a lead to 18 is very sturdy on this map, getting as far on the bridge as they did, especially since Sandwich does not have a vac of their own to respond with. They really only have the bubbler that you can try to walk through, even as it's shrinking. And I mean, you you said it, Jackie. We see. Sandwich struggling on this defense, crowd being popped by this arrow spray right now, and just trying to get this pick. And we things are not looking great for Sandwich right now. It's Frostbite trying for this knockout. Oh, that puts Sandwich in a really, really unfortunate spot where they do have to knock out if they have any hopes of taking this game. But it's never over until it's over, and we've seen Sandwich pull out some funky, funky stuff. So it is, you know, anyone's game here still. Even though they are two down and, you know, still in a very unfortunate spot. The Stamper gets a nice trade before going down themselves. Yeah, we see some spamming with that Booyah Bomb, or Booyah Button from that Octobrush in support of that Booyah Bomb. But the Earth Spray still goes down and Frostbite is still well on the territory of Sandwich right now. The crab has popped on their bridge, which is so hard to deal with. Forced to drop, but the Octobrush still gets taken down nonetheless. The Defense Crab on the side of Sandwich, not getting the pick that they need and... Frostbite, it just feels like setting up camp here. They're feeling unopposed here, Jackie, and it, I don't know how Sandwich can respond to this. Yeah, like you said, it seems like Frostbite has complete control of the map and the game so far. I really I really hope that uh, Sandwich can maybe get a last-minute defense here, but they're two down. This might be the end. This might, this lo oh, and that's a knockout. Oh. That's the knockout for Frostbite. This is a game five set. Frostbite goes gets up two, two to two in the set. We're going to a game five. I... I, I keep saying it, I keep repeating myself because I can't believe it. I'll be completely honest, Weave. <laughs> it's insane. Sandwich, you know, has been putting up such a good show and, and like, really showing what they're made of, but here, they just kind of crumpled, unfortunately. Not really able to take even a single foothold as Frostbite just kept bowling them back and back with their spawn, and they weren't able to get the picks they needed, you know, part maybe in part to... Uh, Eeltail being that, you know, very, very narrow map, not many flank options for Sandwich's comp to take advantage of, but, you know, Scorch Gorge, Clamblitz, uh, return to form maybe from game one in, uh, how interesting they were in Clamblitz, but on a very different map. Yeah, we know how dangerous and how scary Sandwich can be on Clamblitz, especially on a map like Scorch. Jackie, what are some of your thoughts on the stage? Um, well, I'm, re I'm really hoping to see some play from the bubbler because it can make it can make some good plays near the choke point because it's really hard to get in to get some clamps into the basket for some early pushes often. But their comp seems like it could be all right suited for this map. And I'm, you know, I'm liking the Octo Brush as well. Maybe they'll get another flank off. Yeah, and notably Sandwich is not off to change their comp whatsoever. Frostbite has been keeping it kind of minimal, switching between their machine and their stamper and even switching their charger out in that last game. But... Notably, Sandwich has been kind of sick with what they got and Weave. Do you think that's just a comfort pick? Do you think that's a fun pick? Or do you think they really just believe in that's what they have best? I mean, it could be any of it. I mean, I always like to see the weapons that aren't just Splash. So, I mean, uh, I don't really care what it is, to be honest. It's not Splash and that's all that matters. Well, I mean, they have one Splash, but I feel like every team is allowed one Splash. Oh, yeah. you c every Any comp in this meta can work as long as you have one Splash. Um, yeah. So, well, it, it really works if you have two, but... <laughs> yeah. Any comp can work in this meta as long as you have two splashes and a T-Tech. And then maybe if you had a machine, it could, you know, it, it would just help a little. Yeah. You could be throwing a stamper to really round it out. Yeah, yeah. This game has a really diverse meta. Yeah, there's, there's, but, I there's mean, so many options for all your five weapons that you play. But uh, we're seeing here that it's never sealed in stone as we go into this game five match point with the Kuo... Oh. Oh. Yay! We see this tri stringer coming out from Frostbite. Opting to knock it with that leader. I mean, the arc shots on Scorch Gorge can be kind of ridiculous. I mean, this this map and Bo were the first parts of Splatoon 3 revealed, and I guess that's the energy that Frostbite wants to take advantage of. What do you think of this opening so far, Jackie? 
We see early specials from both teams already. We see some Booyah bombs going from the Aero Spray. And we're seeing a lot of aggression from Frostbite. They might even look for a pick here and try to... Oh! This... Already one down. That was a, that was a great job pushing out the splash. The uh, Sandwich did a great job pairing up to try to get the pick there. Yeah, Sandwich is doing a great job pairing up, but right now... Frostbite is the one with the majority of the map control. This map is painted very yellow, which makes it hard for Sandwich to try and move around. We, how do you think they're going to try and respond to this? Um, well, they respond by getting two down on the enemy side, and this uh, Reborn over here is not in a great spot. It is going to end up jumping out. That is three down. They do have a Crab on their side, as well as a Whale, and that bow is going to be you know, trying to be as, as defensive as a position as possible, but now the mid is painted very, very blue, and this could be a push starting here from Sandwich. Yeah, all their clams are in that octobrush right now, but the air is, or oh, I'm looking. To, but yeah, a lot of sandwich is going to go down. That bush is going to kind of fizzle out there, and they're conceding a lot of control. And Frostbite being ever optimistic, trying to take advantage of it because this is game five of a single Elam tournament. The loser gets knocked out here, and you know both of these teams really want to win and move on. Jackie, what do you think of what we're seeing right now? We're seeing a lot of map control from Frostbite, and they've got their specials up, and they're looking for a push here, but the Octobrush gets two for one, and there's three down now for Frostbite, so Sandwich is looking to get back into this game, maybe start forming a push and collecting clams. Yeah, it's felt like a it's felt like a ping pong of control where one team gets control, hit the ball to the other side, and then they just fizzle out, and it goes back and forth ever and over again. The shark from the spot is coming out, but it's going to get called up by the Octobrush, and all of a sudden Sandwich has a good amount of momentum on their side. They have a lot of clams at the ready. They can easily make a ball for a push to happen, but they just need to get all the way to that basket and weave. How do you think they're going to go about going there? Well, I think that this Octobrush is about to start pop Zipcaster super soon and try to disrupt the enemy uh, backline as you know the players of Frostbite start moving forward. But they are going to be seen by this uh, this bow. Let's see if they're going to be able to get the pick here, and they do. It is huge. That opens a lot of control in mid for the uh, the team. But unfortunately, they do end up going down. And it's two down on the side of Sandwich, and uh, Frostbite is starting to move in here with a jump out that uh, really does seal the deal. And we could definitely see something something strong coming out here from Frostbite. Yeah, but we're halfway through this team, we're through this game. More than that, and we've not seen a single team break the basket once. Frostbite is pushing themselves really far. The crab getting on that little tiny rail. Nice double Ooh. from the splash matic And that's probably going to be the basket broken from Frostbite. And this is the first push of the game. Frostbite really needs to make it count, Jackie, to prevent a strong counter push from Sandwich immediately after. Yeah, like you said, it's been really back and forth. But we can probably expect to see that more of that this game. So getting any push is important because who knows when the next one will be if the game continues at this rate. Yeah, who knows if there will even be a second push, you know, this ag this aggressive and this breakaway plays worked amazing for Sandwich on Museum, but doesn't quite work on a map so linear as Scored Gorge, where it's kind of hard to move, but the Octoverse gets a beautiful pick on that Tri-Springer there, and Sandwich is trying to file in, they're trying to force out Frostbite onto their plat. Weef, what do you think is their strategy is going to be trying to get that lead from Frostbite? Uh, that brush uses the uh, Crab Tank over there as cover, and unfortunately, that could have been a great push, but they just go down a little bit too early, causing them to only get that power clam jump in. And now, uh, a minute left on the clock, it looks like Frostbite is posturing themselves with that Booyah Bomb, with that two clams. You know, they're starting to get a really strong push going here, and it looks like it's just going to keep going as this machine gets some really nice picks. Yeah, this machine from Frostbite got some really cool picks there. It's down to 58, 55. This backside is still open. Frostbite is still scoring down to 40 now, and three on the side of Sandwich are down. That splash just came from Spawn to try and help save this defense however possible, but this is what we've been seeing. Sandwich has not been strong on defense. The ball jump's going to come through, bring it down to 14. Jackie, Sandwich is struggling right now. Sandwich is struggling, but it's two down for Frostbite, so they might have a chance to get back into this game here. They're painting, they're getting a little bit more map control, and they're trying to get their specials up for one last push at the end of this game. Yeah, and what a push it has to be. Sandwich has to go from 80 down to 13, and they have roughly 45 seconds to do it, including that overtime clock. But they're still going down. They don't have any map control right now. That root painted to the enemy basket is not there, but three are dead on the side of Frostbite Weave. This could be Sandwich's chance for a final hurrah. You know that this brush is going to go ahead and try to get that jump in, but they need other clams. They, it, a single jump is not going to cut it by far. So we're just going to see them use their specials. They only have about 10 seconds left to make this work, and this brush is going to be going at full force, holding the Booyah Bomb, trying to use their specials as good as possible. 
And unfortunately, they do get picked. We're not gonna we're gonna see the mad rush for the basket as it's only the squiffer so close to the basket and yet so far. And Frostbite is going to take it. Three two versus Sandwich. Frostbite played incredibly well, but my goodness, did Sandwich make it make them work for it, especially in games one and three. But ultimately, Frostbite, the strong, sturdy, well established, well coordinated team, is going to come out on top today. Very good set from both of these teams, but Frostbite is going to move on to the top eight bracket. Yeah, definitely one of the most fun sets that I've seen. A lot of back and forth. We went to game five. We had some crazy plays going on throughout the entire set. We saw some great defensive play from Frostbite. Yeah, both yeah, of these I'm... teams... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm not going to lie, that Clamlet's Museum game is probably one of the my favorite matches I've ever commentated. What a match with the, the double ball jump, the weird flanks from the Octobrush. This... Sandwich is an incredibly fun team to watch, and Frostbite made for a formidable opponent. But yeah, like you said, it's it's over for Sandwich. No more for them. Yeah, they get to enjoy some nice dinner. Maybe make a, make a sandwich of their own, uh, full of their tears, and maybe a few ball, maybe a few power clans. But that being said, we are going to go on the shortest of short short breaks before we return for round three. Make sure not to go anywhere because it's only going to get crazier from here.
Hello and welcome back to Under Pressure's Krill Streak, the most serious of all tournaments in Splatoon history. Um, I am Weef and I'm joined with Jackie and Broken Pinky, uh, both doing a, a great job here. Um, once again, we are extremely professional as we go into this next match. We, you know, last set was a really, really a, a great show uh, between Sandwich and uh, X, um, not X-Ray, what, uh, the, the, the Frostbite. And now we're going into Quantum and Stargaze. Uh, Pinky, what are your thoughts on this matchup here? I mean, we we, we know, know your mom is a pretty solid, you know, established team. Power Zero <laughs> Hockey is very... Not your mom. Not your mom. It's Quantum, actually. Okay, well, your mom, but they put the quant in front of it, so now it's Quantum. But you, 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 the core idea is there, you know. As for... You know, and Stargaze is going to try and come up against that, but... We're in quarterfinals right now to the top eight of the single even bracket weave, so I'm definitely excited to see what happens in the set. Yeah, Stargaze is a powerful team. There's no denying that. However, just looking at this uh, roster on the side of Quant Mum uh, makes me fear for my death. Uh, it's uh, really, really terrifying, but, uh, you know, quarterfinals, best of five. <laughs> uh, like, it's, it might be, it might last three games. We might see Stargaze pull out something really good here and go even further. So, uh, who, who knows? Jackie, do you have any thoughts in particular here as we are patiently, uh, patiently waiting? Well, like you guys said, Quantum has a team with a lot of really well-developed players. And Stargaze, also a great team that I'm hoping to see. A pretty good, pretty good fight from both teams here. Yeah. Um, if you if you want, we can take a look at the bracket here while we wait, just depending on uh, circumstances. <laughs> um, <laughs> just while we wait. Um... <laughs> yes. Woo! Let's go. Okay. Um, so uh, right now, uh, Frostbite is gonna have their their hands uh, their. What's the phrase? I can't think of the phrase. They're gonna have a match against White Noise, that's for sure. Uh, we're gonna see how that turns out. Uh, they're gonna have the... I can't remember the phrase. I'm so fun mad. Fun time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Fun time. Yeah, fun time. And then we also see SV179 doing very good here, making their way two quarters, or actually uh, even further than that. They, they made it to a semis down there. Uh, that is a you know pickup with I believe Henry and a few other players, um, and we're just gonna see how this is going here. But we are going into the later stages of this tournament as uh, the krill streaks are growing; they're plentiful. Yeah, everyone at home, keep in mind that if you die in the game, you die for real. So this krill streak is extremely serious for determining the fate of all these players left in this tournament. Oh yeah, and um, well yeah, single limb, single limb's always fun, <laughs> um, just because the stakes are high. Uh, I don't know, uh, we're we're kind of spitballing here as we wait for these players to get their fourths in, get their thirds in, <laughs> get everything in. <laughs> Jackie, what do you think of this fun waiting action? You know, I'm really enjoying waiting, and I'm also really enjoying the entertainment we're getting, you know, in between brackets, maps and modes, and the team rosters. We're getting we're getting a lot of good streaming action here. Absolutely. I mean, only the most professional of broadcasts here, brought to you by SV Elemental. <laughs> Man, this platoon, boring as hell. <laughs> yeah, no, I, if only there were a way to make platoon gameplay if more only, entertaining. If only, if only we had a little... Uh, if we had a, you know, a little, maybe something to watch on the side. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe some, maybe some other, you know, alternate gameplay to just en enthrall ourselves in, if you, if you say, so you say. Oh yeah, but um, we are, you know, <laughs> waiting, waiting ever so patiently. Um, waiting speedrun, get your force in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I believe um. I can't remember the maps, unfortunately. I'm gonna go search for those while you two spitball some more. Oh, we have We're... the first game will be Splat Zones on Wahoo World. What do we think about that map, uh, Pinky? Uh, I think I think that this is one of the maps that they brought over from Splatoon 2, and whether or not it was a good idea is up to the eye of the beholder. 
And it, in my eyes, it's great. I love Wahoo World. It's one of my favorites. It's so strange. Half the time you can't go certain ways, and half the time you can. I love it. Yeah. It's, um, the the mention of Wahoo World makes me vomit in my mouth a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this map is. I mean, it's it's okay on flat zones. Uh, but that's that's putting it. Uh, that's that's a really low bar, to be honest. But it's on map list because you don't have any other choice, really. Um, but uh, yeah, this is gonna be. It's hard to say what's gonna be run here. I mean, you can make a lot of stuff work on it. It'll just. I think Splash fine, is gonna be I run guess. here. I'm making a bold prediction. I think Splash is gonna be run here. No. Real. See, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the packs. people. Everyone loves Wahoo Zones. Everyone. No. Um, I think <laughs> that democracy is for the weak, and that we should hold a cue, uh, hold like a uh, stage a coup. Um, who's with me? One in Twitch chat, if you agree with me. Anyway, <laughs> everyone type one in this upcoming poll if you're if you're with me mm, for starting a coup. I think. Well, what about what about two for? You know, we love democracy, and we also love Wahoo Zones, the best map maybe in the game. Um, uh, the, uh Jackie Roll's worst opinion ever. <laughs> asked to leave the TriCast. It is worse. just me and Pinky no, from now no. on. Hello and welcome. Welcome back to uh, Under Pressure's Krill Streak. It is me here with Broken Pinky and nobody else. I don't know who what you're talking about. I don't know who that Jackie guy is, <laughs> but they are just in here. Um, we've we've certainly heard worse opinions. Don't 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 kid yourself. Uh, it's hard to think of one. No, I <laughs> I kid. We um, but I know. Hopefully, we're gonna be getting into this game soonish, so you can stop doing oh. Clarence Heavy. Ayo, I got Ayo, it. The best step in the game. Perfect timing. I'm so good. Oh, what are we seeing here, uh, Jackie? Well, for for both teams, we're seeing an E-leader, which they're going to try to use that open sight line there. They're going to try to see if they can, you know, make some early picks potentially. But I really like the junior pick. It's And Glugas are interesting as well. We're going to see m maybe some uh, some heavy painting from that side, but the double crab's going to be a mighty foe to fight against. Yeah, there's Bluga out here already throwing a wall out, trying to skirt, but uh, the, the crab tanks have out. Two crab tanks have out. I love this meta. Eater is going to get picked off, and this looks like it's going to be a very, very strong start from Quantum Mom here. Uh, what do you think, Piggy? Uh, I think this meta is totally going to change, and we're not going to see any form of either splash as we go into the upcoming patch. So, very excited for that, but I'm even more excited to see how Stargaze is going to try and retake this zone because Quantum Mom got to a fantastic start here with that cap, and just. Rob on this machine is just really struggling to peek over this ledge weave, and it's so hard for Stargaze to get back into the zone when they're on this low ground compared to Quantum. But look at that top bar there. Um, Wavebreaker come out, uh, the bubble comes out, and they're still holding on to the Booyah Bomb. So we do see the zone go to Stargaze for the first time in this match, but they do have a big fight ahead of them if they do want to retake that lead here, especially with two members down and one just jumping in. Uh, you know... Um, we're gonna see just Quantum, uh, Quantum just move in so, so fast here. Already, you know, in the plot. And so, uh, you know, Jackie, we're really gonna see how strong this push is gonna be. Absolutely. We saw the momentum swing swing back to Stargaze temporarily and just as fast it swung back. But it looks like Stargaze might have an angle to come back in here and cap the zone. And we'll see if they can, you know, push out Quantum a little bit, maybe get a little bit of an, uh, an advantage here. Well paced bubbler does help them regain the zone temporarily, but unfortunately their glugas do go down. We have gonna come out and displace power. This is a little bit, but not enough. And you know, these splashes from Quantum are moving in. Oh my god. Uh Pinky, what do we just see there? Uh we're seeing these glugas not being allowed to play the game right now, I think, because these glugas have been going down constantly right now for Stargaze, and it's kind of just led to Stargaze kind of falling apart here. We do see this we see the zero uh, on the splash. Going to spawn, gets the pick on the Glugas as they try to drop out of spawn, trying to play the game challenge, impossible edition, when there's a splash matic in your face. Here comes Lucina trying to get around this leader, and right now, Quantum is just being so annoying for Stargaze, and they still have such a solid control of the zone, and they're going for this Naga here, Boo Bomb is going to be thrown on the zone, and they just have to hold for a little longer, but now oh. it's being consistent by Stargaze! Oh my god. Oh, um, one play left. Yeah, there. 
That's insane. Um, it's a comeback you love to see, and that is a wipeout from Stargaze onto Quamum. If they can move fast enough, we see that Junior painting behind for a bubble, but if they can move fast enough and put a lot of pressure onto Quamum, it is not out of the picture as their zone timer is starting to count down. Pinky, how likely is it that we see this comeback here? I don't know, Weef, but this would be insane if we do see it. Stargaze holding a really strong control in the zone, and Jackie, what do you think we're going to see as Quamum tries to this retake? Well, as they got the retake down, I want to see both teams, you know, trying to get back into the game because no one's really got, like, a solid advantage. It looks like a pretty even fight here. So, oh, that's two picks! It's, it looks like Stargate's going to have the advantage once again. Let's see if they can hold them out just as long and get another good push in. Stargate does have a fat penalty on them, and now uh, they, their push is effectively over. That E-leader goes down, you know super punishing and allowing Quantum to just move in basically uncontested. Their pace is just so, so fast. And if you look away for just a second, if you die for just a second, they're going to be, like we see here, Zero is going to be in your base. Uh, does get picked off by the Glucas, though. Great pick from them. But we are starting to run out of time, Pingy. There is only about 10 seconds left on the clock before Quantum KOs. Even less than that, and Stargaze desperately trying to get some contestants in the zone, but they just don't have a whole lot of paint right now. Their only good painter is that Junior. That Junior is dead right now, and I don't think Stargaze is going to be able to make it happen, and they aren't. Quantum taking a very strong game one. Yeah, super, super um, great showing from Stargaze against the absolute force of nature that is Quantum. But, uh, like, they were dominant, you know, it, it is very clear. Who has the confidence, who has the, the mechanics uh, and the coordination to just move in and dominate. But we're going to see if the change of map mode that we're about to go to, I believe, TC Hagglefish. Um, we're going to see if that makes any difference here as, you know, as we move on in this set. Yeah, I mean, TC Hagglefish could mean a lot of things. It's, I, in my opinion, it's one of the stronger uh, or more viable and more balanced tower control maps in this game and it really shows off some of the strengths in this mode but Hagglefish inherently lends, lends itself to being very dominated by E-leaders and we've seen both teams bring out leaders so Jackie what do you think we're going to see in this in this game? Yeah like last game where we saw both the leaders like you said they're probably going to have a really good time on this map since you've got all of the open space really good spots and to get them it's kind of hard to contest them without the crab tanks but as we saw Quantum did run the double crabs with Starga Stargaze might run, might also end up running uh, the crab or two to try to contest those backline weapons here. Real talk, Pinky. Do we think we're gonna see the Glugas again? I don't know about that. To be fully honest, because it just really so. does not work out. I I do hope so. I love Glugas. I think they're cool, but it just did not work out very well for Stargaze in that game one. Yeah, that was a. Super unfortunate. I, you know, did we see Power snipe the Glugas through their wall? Maybe. Uh, Splatoon 3 for the Nintendo Switch, everyone. <laughs> Very functional game, but uh, we're going to get right into it. And once again, Jackie, we'll, uh, we'll talk about what we see here as we're going into it. Yeah, we got a pretty standard call from Quantum. Really aggressive, the E-leader. But, oh, I love Ooh. the blaster pick. It's really interesting. You're going to have the bubble to help push the tower, and also the blaster is great at getting the enemy team off the tower when you're uncontested. Yeah, definitely. Um, both teams running E-leader as the sight lines on this map are absolutely insane. But we already see Power being just a little bit more aggressive with it, and he might be able to get some picks that, you know, um, Avril on the other team might not be able to just because of his confidence and his aggression. But right now, it's a big stall fest for mid. Um, you know, Stargates are doing a good job at holding it and making sure it doesn't swing one way or another. But eventually, they are going to want it to swing in their favor. And Pinky, it's going to be real hard with that Crab Tank staring them down. Yeah, Stargate's in a rough spot right now. Nice night from that leader, but I mean, I am very interested to see how this confidence from Stargate is, is going to work out. Starskid is a very known and very strong blaster player, but right now it's this T tag on the side of Quamum that's really annoying them and really getting in the walls. But right now, Quam is, Quamum is not pushing the tower that much. They don't have a lot of resources in mid, and despite all the control that Quamum has, they don't have a push going. And now they're three down wave. I think this is Stargate's chance for a counter push. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but uh, at the bottom there, their blaster uh, was just fighting off two players and ended up in a trade after they got picked with the uh, the triple ink strike. But right now, we do see Stargaze take the lead. It's not a very wide one, but it is a lead nonetheless. But their teammates are starting to go down, but they do get the pick against the uh, uh, against Hunty on that T-Tech. 
And even though mid is starting to swing back into Quantum's favor, that is a decent starting push for them to have got, you know, they're starting to gain the momentum that they need, the confidence that they can do something against this team that is not an unbreakable force. And Jackie, we're gonna see how they decide to, you know, go about, you know, thinking about wanting to make another pick here, or another, yeah. uh, another push. Absolutely, we're seeing a pretty even game, but they just put down the Wave Breaker, and they've got a little bit of an advantage now, not only with players on the board, but with specials and map control, so I think that Quantum might be able to get a good push here. But the Blaster comes in with a great pick, but it's still two down, so it looks like Quantum's going to continue pushing here. Yeah, power, you know, playing forward that e leader can be so powerful with just the pure suppression you can put out, but you do put yourself at risk of being picked like that, but it all works out in the end as, you know, uh, Picks roll out from Quamum. They're already gonna break this checkpoint here, and with only two players up really on Stargaze, it's gonna look rough for them, you know, getting back out of this. Uh, how, how are they gonna get out of this, Mickey? I mean, I don't know. Stargaze has been really trying with this defense. They're delaying their tri strikes on that tower, trying to keep Quantum off and trying to buy themselves time to get picks. And in fairness, it worked really well, but Lucina's still on this tower with that crab thing. He's forced off, but notably Stargaze is to get all the way down to 31 right now, and Quantum's push is still not over yet. And to get some fights, this one over the splash and the T-Tech is so critical, but it looks like both are going to opt to run away and just try and disengage Weave, but things are looking real rough for, for Stargaze right now, and now they're three down, and Quantum can just keep on pushing if they choose to. Poor, poor Avril just getting rushed down there. Uh, it's hardly safe on their plat right now as there's a good amount of orange paint and, you know, the players from Quantum are super adept at pushing fast. We see Zero over here getting that crab ready as the crab from Lucina goes out, you know, using their specials wisely, using them in a stagger manner to just maximize the amount of control that they can get from it. And they're already at that checkpoint yet again. Uh, but, you know, three do go down. Um, Jackie, look, that that's going to be a wipeout from Stargaze. How are they going to take advantage of this? Yeah, this looks like a great opportunity for a, a Stargaze to push out and maybe get a, a, a good push here. I'm really loving the T-Tex ink strikes defensively. They're doing a great job of shutting down the pushes here. Unfortunately, that machine tries to get the Booyah Bomb. Beautiful tap shot from Avril over there. The Booyah Bomb did get taken out, but that is going to be another wipe. Back-to-back -back wipes. This is going to be great for Stargaze if they can play their cards right. And Pinky looks like the tri checks are coming out. They have plenty of specials and a bubble at the ready. As long as that blaster doesn't go down, that's pretty a few guaranteed points, If unless they use it super aggressively here, as we do see. Yeah, but I feel like using the bubble that aggressively really sets the Stargaze's style. So they can uh, they can set up really aggressively, but that crab's gonna get popped. It's gonna pop the machine like a like a freaking pimple, and Stargaze goes three down. So close to that lead, but so far, and they're only 40 seconds to reprise it. Quamba having a beautiful defense. They're aided by the specials, and Stargaze has a rough hill to climb if they want to get this lead back. Weave. First of all, gross. I can't believe you just said that. Second of all, that is so, so tragic for Stargaze. This star is basically, uh, forgive me the, the, the pun, but the star is basically a line for them to get that far. Double wipeouts along the tape, uh, one wipeout along the tape mid, and the other wipeout allowing them to get as far as they did. But uh, it's 10 seconds on the board. They have to get on this tower and never leave it, or the game is over over and Quantum will take the set. T-Tech is going to climb on it, but they're not going to be uncontested. Um, Zero over there getting the pick and the tower looks like it's going to go to Quantum and so is the game. Yeah, Quantum what? just played a very strong game there and I mean, now they're up 2-0 in the set and they're putting themselves in a great position to move on to this bracket and Stargaze really has to dig deep and get a strong counter, counter going because they had to get this reverse 3-0 if they want to stay in this tournament. Yeah, uh, never a good position to be in. It's like playing in overtime. You can't let up for just a second or you are out. But uh, Jackie, do you have any thoughts on how these teams are going to fare on Rainmaker Makeup Art based on the really good show we just saw from Stargaze there? Yeah, I think Quantum's going to keep up the early aggression, right? And they're going to be able to hopefully get some good early pushes in. But I've been really liking Stargaze defensively. Even though they couldn't eke it out at the end there, they still had some great plays and managed to stop the pushes before it was even a knockout. So it's a pretty close back and forth game so far. So I'm hoping to see what happens in the Rainmaker, which is often a much faster game mode. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Pinky, what are your thoughts here? Uh, I mean... Rainmakers is an interesting map mode in general, especially on Make O Mart, because it's a very clustered stage. It's very, it's, everything is very close together, but those checkpoints, 
surprisingly far apart in spite of that and you really have to overly commit to one route versus the other and it's very interesting to see just how the defense can be set up to persuade a team to go a route that will be less favorable for them overall yeah overall just a interesting map and uh you know if stargaze keeps it up they do definitely have a chance at taking some games here despite how powerful quantum was on that first game on wahoo world splat zones you know they prove that they can't take it back. They just have to get, you know, the ones that, like I said, the stars just have to align. So we'll see how that goes as we get into it super shortly. Just, uh, just waiting, waiting ever so patiently. Ever so patiently. And we have some wonderful adverts to keep us company as we try and wait for this, for this game three to set. And we try to wait to see what Stargate has to offer as a retaliation. Once again, this, this tournament is extremely serious. Um, it's very important in the competitive scene to take yourself seriously and just for the, the health of the scene in order to like, you know, present yourself professionally. Uh, so people take you seriously and don't think that you are a joke. But we're going to go right into it and see, we're going to see Jackie if these comps are a joke. Nailed it. <laughs> you know what they say, don't get cooked, stay off the hook. Oh wow, okay. You know, we're we're seeing an interesting pick with the V shot on the team on the side of Quantum instead of going for the double tri strike or even a longer range weapon here. We have four frontline shooters. Looks like they're gonna be able to get the pop. Yeah, um, super super interesting pick for the tri stringer there. You know, going for something with a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more AOE and crab shredding potential. We already see this crab go down. That's gonna be two down on the side of Quantum, three down. Uh, and we're gonna see if uh, if Zero over there can hold it down while uh, you know Stargate is gonna want to go and take this push to its fullest extent while they can. Uh, Pinky, you know what are they gonna be doing to make sure this push lands? I mean, Stargate is gonna try and break down this wall, prepare for that beat drop. That Rainmaker's getting close to that checkpoint, but it gets stuffed out by the Crab Tank, the classic, and that Rainmaker shield is in jeopardy. It doesn't look like Stargate is gonna continue that push, Weef, and push gets suffocated way earlier than Stargate would have liked. Oh yeah, it was super, super unfortunate, but Quantum's defense is just super, super strong. But main control is not quite there yet for Quantum, you know, uh, Stargate, the, the map is painted pink, and Jackie, we are gonna see, you know, the splash here, uh, like, they're just gonna do all they can to take mid-back. That is gonna be three down on the side of Stargate, that's gonna be a wipeout, and Quantum is gonna take this to the fullest extent that they can. Absolutely. It looks like it's going to be a good push for Quantum. And don't forget, they have the Crab Tank open. They just popped it with the Tri Strike. So they have all their specials down now, and they're looking to maybe catch the. Or they're going to try to check the checkpoint. Oh, but that was a, such a smart play by Zero, switching off the checkpoints. They all have their defenses on the left one. They weren't even thinking about if Zero could maybe look for an angle to get to the right checkpoint there. The absolute fake out. And Lucina is still up in their base on their snipe being annoying and looks like gonna get a few picks while they're there but uh pinky look like, like it looks some um, like stargaze uh is gonna kind of be struggling here on defense going you know three down and problem is gonna continue to push yeah and problem got that push down to is getting that point total down to 29 and they're still there contesting that rainmaker those shooters just popping that rainmaker like it's candy and they're just going right in for it but they're getting picked off a little bit before they can get any more pushes and Stargaze having a strong defense finally, but never mind. Someone's gonna no. get that breakaway. Get it down to five. Oh, oh, get it to oh, oh. down to one point. Power with the absolute sneaky, sneaky play there, and they're still there. Zero is up there causing trouble. Is gonna get K uh, is gonna get knocked out, but uh, looks like Lucina is once again there, chasing the Rainmaker as far as they can. Hopefully uh, for them, Stargaze is going to be able to either make the jump out or finally get it back mid. But look at look at power. Look at look at what they are doing over here. Um, Sharking and uh, Jackie, just look at it. Be behold. <laughs> I love I love when players like that shark. It's uh, it's great. It's basically shut down the push even if they had an advantage or not. Cause they have to spend all that time to go back and pop the Rainmaker bubble. But it looks like here things might be swinging a little bit in Stargaze's favor since they've got. Player advantage, they got special. Oh, but that's two down! Sad, and Liquid like Machine is not gonna survive for much longer either. It's only for the bow, and a bow cannot do much by themselves. And Quantum has specials, has the Rainmaker, has the numbers and the positioning. Looks like uh, they're gonna get a pretty good push yet again here, Pinky. Yeah, 
I mean, Kwano's just having such a strong pushes here. And yeah, once again, they're going for the fake out. They're going right to that right side. Ooh. Rainmaker still gets a kill for going down just for good measure. And Quantum is just being so dominant in this game. Stargaze is really struggling to peek through the holes in the sky and just try and get this through. And Quantum just absolutely setting themselves up authoritatively trying to get this 3 0 weave. Oh man, the uh, Inkzuka was a bit vulnerable there and did end up getting picked off. It is going to be two down for Quantum. And these specials are going to go out from Stargaze, just trying to get any push that they can. Um, Hunty over there is going to be fighting over with the, the Blaster Surge Kit as they pop a very interesting bubble that, in the hopes of protecting the Rainmaker as they jumped, but unfortunately did not get the uh, desired benefit out of that. And now Jackie, uh, Quantum is collapsing on Stargaze in mid and with only 30 seconds left and the Rainmaker is going to be able to play super defensively, it's going to be hard for Stargaze to take this back. Absolutely. Stargaze really needs to make a play now to try to get the control of the Rainmaker and look for one final push, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But you never know, something could, so they could pull something out of their back pocket. We see the Sloshine get, putting a lot of pressure on the Rainmaker right now. And they also have the numbers and specials advantage, so maybe with the last 10 seconds, they can find something. Yeah, it's going to be super hard there. Um, they're going to go diving for it. The Rainmaker is going to get the pick, and that is going to be game and set going to Quantum. Tinky, what a game. <laughs> what a game, what a set, what a match, but Quantum is going to be taking it over Stargaze 3 0. Absolutely dominant display in this set, not dropping a single game, and just looking so sturdy and never really looking phased by what Stargaze has to offer. And now Quantum is going to be moving on to top four. Yeah, it's going to be a. Uh... It's gonna be rough, but you know, uh, that's that's the, that's the power of having a good krill streak for you. I don't know what I'm saying, but it looks like we are going to be going to what is that semifinals? Uh, what's semifinals. the one before grands? I don't know, man. Semifinals. I, I just work here, um, but uh, we're Trying gonna be going best. to that after a short break as we're going into the next set. We'll see you shortly.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Under Pressure Krill Streak. The TriCast is back in action. I am Broken Pinky, joined here by Jackie and Weef. And we are on the semifinals right now. Top four of this single Elam tournament. We got White Noise versus Bad. Weef, what do you think of this matchup up here for us? Sorry, sorry. I'm too busy looking at that sexy, sexy av uh, animated uh, avatar there to be focused on the map. But uh, just generally, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a good one. Uh -huh. But just based on that, uh, you know a team means business when they've got an animated avatar. That's super cool. Um, I don't know. Don't have any thoughts behind that. No thoughts head empty, to be honest. I mean, that checks out for, for, for you, to be completely honest. But, I mean, White Noise is absolutely a force to be reckoned with. Second place at DivX, DivX Playoffs in Ludi. I mean, such a strong team, but bad. No slouch either, taking out the fourth seed to get here. The only team to play in, to play in all three rounds so far, Jackie. What do you think we're gonna see in this set? You know, I I don't know much about what White Noise can bring to the table or bad, but I really want to see some some good and competitive matches. On our first match, our first map, I think we got Tower Control and Inkwell Art Academy. I think we're gonna have a lot of uh, there's gonna be a lot of really good usage of the high ground. Oh, and here we go. We're getting into the match. We're gonna see what each oh, team's so running. <laughs> here we go off the rails. And that range blaster's coming out. Hey, yo, my favorite, along with the Zimmy. And the v is instead of the Splash. I love that. I'm loving these comps. White Noise is bringing out some Fuego. What do you think of these comps, Weave? Uh, spicy. Uh, me, me likey. Uh, weird comps make my brain happy. And, you know, all these weapons work pretty well together, it seems. And especially, you know, when they are going to start getting these crab tanks out, but uh, actually that is going to be White Noise 3 down. Looks like Bad is taking a really, really strong first push here, taking out the crab. White Noise is going to have to scramble to get their defense together here, as Bad has already passed that first checkpoint in the blink of an eye. In a cruel test of, in a cruel twist of fate, Bad is actually good, and they're at checkpoint 2 <laughs> immediately in 45 seconds against White Noise, and White Noise is still getting staggered. That's the wipeout. Bad is continuing this push. Jackie, what are we seeing? We're seeing in incredible aggression coming up from Bad. They're chaining their specials together great, and White Noise just hasn't been able to, you know, get back in there and defend so far. We're seeing two down for Bad, now three down. It looks like White Noise is finally going to have a chance to push back in and see what they can really bring to the table. Yeah, the White Noise finally... You know, starting to play salt like we know they can. That's gonna be the delayed wipeout on bad. And here comes Orion on these Tetras, doing exactly what Orion does best, being annoying at all heck. Getting a nice pick on the splash, but gets taken out by the leader in the infamous Tetra end lag as White Noise makes a charge of the first checkpoint. Weave, how do you think this push is gonna shake out? It's gonna be interesting to say the least. This bubble is gonna buy them a bit of time to get all the members jump back in. Uh, super fast comp here is going to be able to, you know, really take advantage of um, just how how fast they can get back in, how fast they can back out, and then, you know, be back in it. Uh, April on that Zimmy is going to get taken out, unfortunately, but that's the checkpoint broken. They have the lead now, and the shoe is on the other foot. Now it's bad. It has to really scramble and see what they can do on defense here has just white noise is keeping up the pressure even with only one or two members left yeah but white noise is probably gonna be stopped here at the 20 point mark orion trying to make something happen with the tetris gets the kill with the reef slider Don't speak here too on soon. the tower with the rage blaster gets the pick on the leader you love to see it range maze and that's gonna be another wipeout and white noise probably gonna get this ko here unless bad can stop them in the 11th hour and it's not gonna happen white noise after a rocky start just fires back and gets the knockout versus bad in game one White Noise really showing what they're made of, uh, turning a scary start into an absolute slaughterhouse there at the end. As you, they, well, you said, oh, they're probably gonna get pushed back here as they went one, uh, only down to Orion, but Orion was able to hold down that fort, able to get all the jumps in, able to take it back from the brink of death there. Uh, super, super insane for White Noise there. Yeah, absolutely, and. I mean, that's what a way to start off the set. Both establishing bad as a significant threat and showing how strong the team White Noise is. And this momentum is going to have to keep going as we go on to game two of the set, which is going to be, I believe, on Rainmaker Undertow. Jackie, what are your thoughts on this map and how the set's going to shake out? 
Oh, I think that there's gonna be a really big battle for mid control here. You have you have the left and right high ground areas that are gonna be like able to apply a lot of pressure from ranged weapons, but also you have a lot of really easy opportunities to get pushes in. But the choke points are gonna be hard to get through for getting past that first checkpoint. So we're gonna see how each team manages to make their pushes happen. Exactly, that first checkpoint is so crucial. Most teams opting for that far left checkpoint, which is just oh so far away, but. If you can get through it, you can get a very strong push ahead of yourselves. And we I'm I'm just curious, what are some of your thoughts on what are some of the stuff we expect to see as far as strategies, comps, and play styles as we go into game two? See, you knew not to ask me my thoughts on Sna uh, on uh Undertow. <laughs> you, on you knew what, what, what's um, the, <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't have hot takes on this map. I don't know. Um we could definitely see White Noise bring out the aggression here. Keep keep up the weirdness. Uh, keep up the you know I I believe you you say that range blaster works pretty well on this map. So you know we could definitely see that again. But why speculate when we can just actually see? <laughs> I don't think we'll see range blaster. No, I lied. Let's go, Jerry is the best. Can you guys tell awesome. the range blaster main? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're also seeing this fire slasher coming up from the enemy team, the bad team, which is going to be really interesting pick. Um, yeah, yeah. Tri on bad is going to be certainly interesting to make this happen. Tri Slasher, one of the stronger main weapons in this game, kind of held back by its kit, but a strong wielder can make it work really well. But right now, bad is some good advantage in this opening team fight. What are some of your thoughts on this situation? Crab, crab moment. Crab holding down the fort, saying, um, I am a strong anchor who don't need, or I am a strong team who don't need no anchor because half of my weapons can just turn into an anchor at any given moment. And that's going to be a wipe already right out the gate from White Noise. Going to get that uh, checkpoint nice and painted for April over there to slam it down. And now, uh, you know, White Noise is looking to continue this push here. Uh, I heard a crab go out and uh, from the enemy team. Looks like April's got one of their own as uh, we like to see how this goes here. It looks like they're not going to be able to pick up the Rainmaker before it gets reset just due to the pressure that Bad is putting on them on defense. But, you know, look how yellow uh, yellow that mid is painted, Biggie. Yeah, this map is painted a very, very bright shade of green right now, which is so difficult for Bad to try and contest. And here comes Jared on that Range Blaster trying to make something happen in the paint of or in the side of Bad, but he gets taken out by the, uh, I believe that was the splash on the side of Bad, and Bad's able to stop that push once again. They've been down members multiple times in this match, but they just don't seem to care whatsoever, and they're doing a great job at stuffing the aggression of White Noise. Jack, this, is, yeah. <laughs> this is an interesting match so far. Yeah, White Noise has done a great job of getting pushes off, but just can't seem to get past that choke point. Bad still doing a pretty good job of defending, but they're going to have a little bit of trouble getting back in here and getting some map control. Maybe get a little bit of a lead going on here. Yeah, Elite is exactly what Bad wants to see. We've, how do you think Bad is going to try and respond to the situation? They have the VAC, but you know, with nobody to be there to support it, it's kind of a moot point. They're just going to have to play wisely, uh, try to not go down, essentially. But it's going to be hard when they're going to be just forced back by the, the Tetris. Their, t their Tetris is going the Tetris, and while their Tetris is trapped there, the rest of their team is moving in. April here moving like all hell with that Rainmaker. Um, they are rapidly approaching that goal, and there you go. Super, super fast, super dominant display out there from White Noise. That's like the, the power of sh movement. Sorry, Jackie. <laughs> no, it's all good. Uh, unlike the first game where Bad had a chance, they really got a good early push. They just got shut down. They didn't even get to pick up the Rainmaker once, I believe. Yeah, White Noise really doing a good job of setting the tempo of that, that match, and the sh movement of April on that Rainmaker was too much for Bad to deal with, and all of a sudden, White Noise is one game went away from moving on to Grand Finals, and if Bad wants to stop them, they're going to have to start a reverse 3-0, starting on Clam with Brinewater. Weef, what are your thoughts on this stage and on Bad's prospects for the set? I mean, since Bad has been running that backline, they might have an advantage here, but White Noise's he uh, crab-heavy composition will also help and on Brinewater if you can get a lockout if you can just get past their little plat there if you can pass that ramp you can initiate a lockout really easily and the faster weapons that they have been running are going to excel at that so 
Uh, we're just gonna see how it goes here. Who can m maintain mid for long enough to build up the specials, to build up the resources, the manpower, to push through the ramp into the base, and you know everything else will follow. Love Clan Blitz. Love Brinewater. Uh, hmm. Tetris piece, my favorite map design. <laughs> I, I love the little zigzag Tetris piece. Oh my god, it looks so. Good. I love it on um, Water, I love it on um, Mahi. I would. Everything was was a little Tetris piece. What Jackie, are you what's your favorite about? Tetris piece? My favorite Tetris piece? You know, I really like the line piece, and that's what I hope all all Splatoon maps look like now. Hammerhead Bridge, beautiful. L piece, get the Tetris four in a row. You can't ask for much more. I mean, I think I, I think Eel Tail is a fantastic line piece map, if you ask me. True. I think, I, <laughs> sorry, I think we we should get a T shaped map. Um. Ooh. Would it be good? Probably yeah, not. Salt, yeah. We should get Saltray Rig back in this we game. Should get make Rig map. I agree. I think they'd make Saltray even worse. I think they I think they can make her worse. I believe. I believe in the dream. You, you, your spawn is on the lowest ground possible, but speaking of uh, fun water based maps, here we go. Game three on Clamless Brian Water. We see the squeezer coming out from Jared saying no more to this range blaster tragically. Uh, and white noise trying to put it away. 3 0. Jackie, what do you think of this game opening up? Pomps are still quite interesting. Squeezer, haven't seen that at all yet, and we still have April sticking on the mini splat lane. It's going to be really interesting to see where each team goes. And like you said, the E-leader is going to come out here. Maybe they'll look to like use the height advantage, use the open sight lines, and maybe get some early picks. Yeah, and similarly to game one, we're seeing that bad, taking a strong advantage of this opening team fight, but it's kind of falling apart a little bit as White Noise. Getting himself situated here, Weef, what do you think of this first push going on as White Noise tries to make their way to that basket? I mean, it looks like uh, it's two and two. That leader uh, is going to you know, kind of stop a little bit the the push in from White Noise, but not enough as the basket does get open. We'll see if April's teammates can make it in fast enough to capitalize on them breaking the basket or if it is going to be an 80 push. And it's going to be only the power plan going in, but that's still a good showing. and really uh, can set the tone for the rest of the game here if they let it. Yeah, that clan basket jingle was just some white noise to them and they couldn't really get any other clans into that basket. They're trying to go back into it. Jared on this left side of the map trying to make something happen. Gets a nice pick onto Vinyl. Here comes that Zuka trying to get the pick on that leader, which would be so huge on this map. Not quite able to get the pick, but still suppressing the enemy team enough. And that allows white noise to really move in. Jackie, do you think we're going to see another push? It, I mean, it looks like it, but they are two down, and Jared's getting pressured a lot here, so maybe this is Bad's chance to come back into the game a little bit. Yeah, Jared able to get that nice pick on Moneybags, though, just delay that respawn a little bit longer, and just the longer that White Noise can keep Bad out of their territory, the easier people will be to defend, and the better they can make it an aggressive push of their own, but right now, Bad's leader is moving up a little bit. We you have to imagine this is a little bit scary for White Noise. I mean... It's scary, but it's nothing that they can't handle here. Uh, they are two down. This is going to be a push initiated, but if uh, White Noise takes their time and really, uh, you know, plays as well, they can easily stop this right here. The looks like the E leader though is going to be back in mid, but they do have so many clams under their belt that if they got in, it would be pretty catastrophic for White Noise. Yeah, unfortunately, that leader being the main claim carry was not able to make it all the way to that basket and. I had left a lot of clams on the table that they could have used to score, but they did get a small lead, which, I mean, it doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but we're happy through this game, and Bad can really use this to try and open up a bigger hole into White Noise, should they choose to, but right now we're just in this neutral state, and White Noise has to make has to make a push come together, and this is their opportunity. Three of them are dead, it's just that leader left alive. Jackie, how do you think this push is going to come together? They've got the, well, they've got the bubble to set up, oh, but they use it now, so they can't really use it that aggressively, they have to use it to protect themselves, but they still have a little bit of an advantage here, they've got the map, they've got clams, but two of them are going to go down, so this push might be shut down here. Great pick by April. Yeah, April's been coming up huge on this mini splat lane, just trying to make something happen, the splash will get shredded by the reef slider, and now White Noise is trying to file them to that basket, it's just that T-Take alive to defend, White Noise has the lead, throws some clams in that basket, gets that total all the way down to 52. We see Orion going a little too hard in the paint, and the base gets taken out, but still able to distract a little bit, and White Noise holding the base of Bad excellently. Weave, what do you think of them able to get out of it? I mean, looks like they get some picks. Uh, they looks like they don't have the clams on the board. Only Orion has one single clam, which they are not going to get in. 
but never mind. Yes, they do, and with a wipeout, this is going to be continued. They're not, there's no stopping inside as Orion just continues to be an absolute rat in their base, making sure that they can't ignore it, and there's one claim left. Ellis coming in. Will they be able to make it? And they do, and that is the 3-0 coming out from White Noise, taking over bad and letting themselves a spot in finals. Yeah, very well done to Bad here, putting him a strong fight up against White Noise at multiple points in the set, but ultimately White Noise was just too powerful, and they're going to be moving on to Grand Finals, and they have not dropped a single game this entire tournament. Jackie, I, I can only imagine what White Noise is going to do in Grands. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens. I think both teams have had a stellar performance so far, both going 3-0 in the semifinal matches. If I'm correct about that, I, I don't know. I'm not 100% certain. But I'm re I really want to see um, which team can pull out on top. Because they've both been showing us that they can play pretty well. Yeah, but we will we will get back to this Grand Finals after a short break. But White Noise is going to be there. We're going to see our second, com second candidate in just a minute. But make sure not to go anywhere because we will be back for Grand Finals of Under Pressure Curl Streak. Don't go anywhere because we're about to see some crazy grand finals action. Oh shit, okay, um, okay, so we, we see the, uh, the baby jelly, you know, it, they're, uh, it's looking real tough here for Elemental as they do go in, um, it's really even right now, the baby jelly is gonna start to get some special online, it's gonna be difficult for Elemental to come, to come back for this, will they be able to? Pinky, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure Elemental's gonna do amazing at this, you know, Elma, they call they call them the baby jelly slayer, so I think it's gonna be an amazing matchup for them right now. We we saw 384 wins against the baby jelly. Elemental really pulling their game together. Let's make it 385, baby. Let's go. I'm just this, saying this... early on, Elemental definitely locked out that baby jellyfish with the stinger. <laughs> baby jelly's in a tough spot, but we see Elemental's got the. Stupid Marigold does nothing and is useless for him. It, absolutely, like half half Elemental's hand is garbage, but still has the paint advantage. 
Yeah. As Nothing long works. as he can continue to gain points while Baby Jelly has to throw out cards, he is winning. And look at this. Popping a special to get this suction bomb onto the field means that he's going to be able to get a few more points. And that's probably wins him the game, especially against this blaster. What is this Baby Jelly even thinking? This Baby Jelly may as well be dead because they don't have a brain. They can't <laughs> seem to do anything. Again, a Baby <laughs> Jelly loses the great turf for Inklings win again. Yeah, no, nothing but blunders from this elemental guy. I don't know who let them stream, but, uh, you know, Baby Jelly does take the L and is going to be knocked out right here. Yeah, and, and you, you can tell Peter Griffin's feeling real good about that one. I think the Baby Jelly should have gone with the London opening because, you know, they tried they tried for an early gambit and it just didn't work for them. Yeah, the angling gambit not quite paying off here, you know. The, the stack queen sacrifice not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and Elemental goes up 1-0 in the set. We're going to see the rematch here. How is Baby Jelly There's an start? opportunity for Baby Jelly to come back here. Let's see what Baby Jelly brings to the turf table. Absolute blunder. Redrawing that was not the move here. We'll Careful see how Baby Jelly responds to that. Completely garbage. Flutter is a very good card, though, because it is 14 spaces. Now, the Dynamo Roller is also a fairly excellent card. However, 13 versus 14, that one point of turf can make the difference in the long run. Elemental is doing a great job of taking early space, and looks like Baby Jelly is about to be locked out of this entire match. If Elemental can find the right thing to fit, the right and Elemental just is having a lot of trouble, a lot of difficulty find the really one obvious move, and oh, it's a blunder! I'm... <laughs> Right, Baby like, Jelly I gotta ask, did you, did, did you just say that Dynamo Roller was good? Because you cannot let the Splatoon devs hear that, or are they gonna nerf the <laughs> hell out of Dynamo and Table Turf? I, I'm sorry, but truly, I don't think there's a thing they can do to make that thing bad in Table Turf. In fact, be I surprised. think the only thing you can do to make it bad is to simply use a better card. Elemental and while Dynamo is not the best card, 13. Clearly, obviously, Baby Jelly does have a chance to come back on the right side, even though this Baby Jelly does have not this, have any special points. And no cards to take up the space that Elemental is giving them for free when they could easily shut it down. I exactly, and Baby Jelly stick, you know Baby Jelly deck is... <laughs> Elemental might lose to Baby Jelly here, making this set one-to-one -one if Elemental can't find a good way to use the space that he's opened up for himself. Oh, but but that's the first special charge Elemental's gotten all game. This could be huge if they can get a few more racked up, but it's just so hard to play it seems any like pizza because they have Elemental's in a corner. Are unplayable. Lit Baby Jelly has, no has broken out of confinement. The spawn camp has been broken out of. Baby Jelly even taking the opportunity to use the splat roller, getting more turf on Elemental side. This is bad news and could spell the end for him if he can't get another card on the table. I've never seen someone lose to Baby Jelly so horribly. It's still possible for Elemental to come back, but it's so far, it's looking bad. I'm gonna keep it 100, Elemental. guys. I don't see it happening. I think that he just messed up too much. Baby Jelly, mark my fucking worms, is gonna take the set. Your worms have been marked and even, and even you know, graphed out here, because that's the game. It's over. Baby Jelly breaking confinement at around turn five was definitely the play. And this, see, exactly, rage quit. Unbelievable. And see, and this is why table turf is a much more serious turf sport that we have ever thought before. And honestly, table turf tournaments on the rise. It's interesting, though, because Elemental actually scooped up his cards when the set wasn't finished, officially saying that he admits defeat to the Baby Jelly, because that's how it works when you, you know, close the game in the middle of a set. Baby Jelly sitting there wondering where his opponent went and why they didn't play the third game, because in the first door was so close. There was still an opportunity for, you know, Elemental to break free of this set, or maybe even play for time, but it just couldn't make it happen. Baby Jelly broke free of confinement and Elemental broke free of the sad flesh prison of the video game. <laughs> but that is going to be it for uh, us for now. I'm um, doing a plug rest. No, um, oh yeah. Uh, I <laughs> yeah, I, I I've been loving this. Under Pressure has been probably my favorite table turf tournament I've ever seen so far. Just such incredible plays. You know, the, the Baby Jelly strategies. 
the baby jelly, the baby jelly meta, honestly, is just yeah, ridiculous so, to observe. Elemental, Elemental, the chat is wondering if we can do another match against baby jelly, since we have people saying, why couldn't I bet my channel points on baby jelly? I think we need to see if Elemental can get redemption here and win the and win the set against baby jelly. Maybe we can even have you know a little betting going on in the Twitch chat. All right, we're running well, back. we're setting we're this up. Back. A brief. While we're setting this up, a brief look at the side of the bracket. Uh, currently, the other match is 2-1 uh, in favor of SCB-129. Uh, that being said, anyone's game, because earlier they were 1-1, and for all we know, they could be neck and neck. Yeah, but are they playing table versus Baby Jelly? I did not think so, so honestly, I think this is more worthy of our attention at the current point in time. Grand final yeah, is cancelled. Return to table turf. It's 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 unofficial. The final match will actually not be played in turf war or in ranked mode. It will be played in table turf. As God intended. That should be the final for every single tournament from now on. I think it should. I think that's what we need to do. As we all know, the real test of Splatoon is whether or not you can beat Baby Jelly into the ground. <laughs> So we'll, we'll definitely see that here, um, or not. Uh, you know, I think Baby Jelly Sweep, to be honest. Yeah, this might. One be in chat if you agree. Jelly. Baby Jelly Sweep. Baby Jelly Sweep. Now, as you can see, we have a prediction up. So Baby Jelly Sweep could be happening. Yeah, type one for Baby Jelly Sweep because you you you, you want to see it. Uh, me personally, I've put all of my all of my points into Baby Jelly because I am a Baby Jelly believer. I, so, see, Elemental has the strategy down to 284, 85 wins is nothing to scoff at. Right, but it, consider considering how even that was, we don't know how many wins Baby Jelly has against Elemental. This is true, honestly. I'm just saying, pretty even game right now. We're gonna see if we want a redraw or we're gonna stick with this opener. We might get a mulligan, but no! <gasps> this isn't Baby Jelly! Here. Wait a minute! Hold on! Hey! So Where are going in with the steel chair? This is the biggest scandal in with the steel chair. In all of Esports! Holy shit, she's beating him up! <laughs> Wait! This is- But- I- I can't believe it! I'm at a loss for records! This, just this, like this when, is the biggest uh, esports scandal I've ever seen in my entire life. Baby, Baby Jelly, Jelly had to sub out. Baby Jelly forcedly being traded for Marie sub. Baby Jelly actually got into a coma after that last incident where Elemental closed out of the game. So this tragic is not surprising. Jellyfish Jelly are very hard on Elemental's hands. So tragic we have players in this community that resort to such cheap and unlawful tactics. You know, such talentless players not able to admit defeat when they're to receive it. It's so unfortunate. Looking at the game, Elemental's got three unplayable cards, and it's looking like Marie might have a chance to break through Elemental's line. That being said, Elemental has effectively cut off his side of the board from Marie's. Now, not, nothing Marie can do can really get through unless she has something like a stinger to put on the right side. Note that the Family Guy Funny Moments clips have restarted from the top, so this is actually relevant because now, um, no, I got nothing. <laughs> now, now the funny is on their side. <laughs> now Elemental is going to be extremely distracted while playing this table turf, and this is a real opening for Marie to really just extend the lead as much as possible. And I mean, she has been krilling it so far. Krilling it. Luckily, Elemental does left. have specials that he can use. No, we, These specials no, 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 could no, 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 prove no, no. no, we can't. We can't do this no more. They went. They went three one. We gotta go. No, no. it's a no. Baby Jelly wins. Baby Jelly wins. Baby Jelly wins. Scammed. 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 I love Baby Jelly. Um, we are uh, here at Under Pressure. We are very professional. Um, thank you guys we'll for watching. Very we will seriously. be for normal, uh, normal scheduled program, and uh, we're. Um, do we even do we Elemental even bother going back? That. Go back Elemental in, was sweeping that. Me when I lie. Me when I lie for fun and games. <laughs> um. All right. Um. <laughs> Cash money. <laughs> What <laughs> the?
That was the, the, the best. That was a good segment if you ask that? me. I want, I want to see clips from it. Okay, no one else is doing it, so we'll take a quick break for finals of Kill Streak number two. You could buy. Oh, we weren't off mic there. Awesome. No, you I thought we were. Hello and welcome back to Under Predator Kill Streak, the most professional, well-produced tournament in all of Splatoon history. 
I am Weef, joined by my wonderful, wonderful commentary partners, uh, Broken Pinky and uh, uh, Jackie. Uh, I don't know why I keep trying to call you Riley. It's really embarrassing me. We are in grand finals right now. Single Elam, we are switching from best of five to best of seven, and it is going to be White Noise versus SB120, uh, 129. Both of these teams are very formidable. Pinky, do you have any thoughts here? Um, I definitely think that White Noise is the favorite. You know, second place, Ludi Devex has not lost a single game all day, but SB129, you could not count them out. They got this far for a reason. They're a strong team, and they're the only team that can pose a threat to White Noise at this point in the bracket weave. I mean... Uh, you know, White Noise, of course, uh, very, very formidable, but Enry and Drifty are, you know, all of these players actually are just very, very strong. And so, Jackie, I think, I think they have a very strong chance here, but, you know, we're going to have at least four games to figure this out as we go into it. Exactly. They're the underdogs, but we shouldn't count them out. We On the first map, we've got Rainmaker on Hagglefish. What do you guys think about it? Oh, man. Um... It's uh, the funny jump is my only real thought right now. What about you, Pinky? I mean, that jump is so funny. I mean, I, the, the jump is extremely funny, you know? You can just get all the way from like 60 points to like 30 just instantly if you can make the gamer jump. And if you can't, then, you know, you deserve, I don't know. It's You really need to make that jump on this map. Especially this point in the bracket, you have to get there. And that's like the real cutoff point. It's a 33 point mark, so. Which yeah, if these teams can get their first is really important. We're probably going to see some specials, like specifically to get that out, maybe even a bubbler, even though it's not the most common. It's been used a couple times, and it's pretty good for defending that spot. You can have your Rainmaker run through it to get that jump done. Dare I even invoke the name of the crab? I think it's something uh -oh. I can see. Um, it, it just depends here on what these teams feel like running, how, how seriously they feel on taking. But, uh, you know... A very important prize is on the line. A Sendo NFT. <laughs> very important this is serious. Prize. This is real stuff here. This is Jackie, uh, yeah. I don't know. These, these teams are going to be duking it out. So, Jackie, uh, why don't we talk about what we're going to be seeing here? I'm liking what we're seeing so far. We, Like I said, we got the junior for the bubble, but we've got a pretty standard team for SB129. Orion on the Tetras, like we said before. And we have the Range Blaster again. Pinky, what do you think about the Range Blaster for this map? I mean, hey, I love me some Range Blaster, but it has not been working out great for Jared so far. So I'm interested to see what sort of adaptations we see from White Noise to really facilitate this Range Blaster, really make it work. As I mean, both these teams are using Double Crab, which can be really obnoxious to deal with for more offensive comps. And right now, White Noise is kind of struggling a little bit. It's an absolute crab rave out there in mid, as we just saw so many. And that is how SB129 got the control that they needed to almost break that first checkpoint. Weren't quite able to get there, and they are two down now. It's going to be White Noise having the upper hand here, especially as a few of their members approach getting crab tanks and are going to be starting to think really about uh, getting a solid push going here. And so, Pinky, when are we going to see these two crab tanks? Uh, looks like right now, actually. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's kind of, it's not really a matter of when, it's just, oh, you see them, they're, they're there now. But we do see Yoshi going behind, getting a nice pick on the range blaster there, making, making things just so annoying, and SV129 is being so obnoxious with white noise, just charging right ahead for that first checkpoint and getting it pretty easily. April doing so good at these breakaways, now they can they make this jump, they have, they really, I mean, it's really important to make this jump for saving all the time, but also they're going to go for the safer route, it seems no, like. They, they go the for the jump, jump instead and they get it. Yeah, that's a pretty major advantage here for White Noise, but it's far from over. We saw how just fa uh, how fast that thing can turn. Uh, not the thing. The uh, the tides can turn there. The push, it only takes about 30 seconds to get there once you have the mid control. And Jackie, I mean, it's really far, far from over for SB129. Exactly. Yeah, the pressure's on for SB129 now. They have to make the push, and they have to get the lead. And right now, they're already down 0-2, but it's a 2v2, and they've got the crab tank advantage. Oh, three down now for White Noise. Maybe they can make something work here. Maybe catch the checkpoint before they can get back in the game. But there's three jumps behind. 
Oh. Oh, wow. That's super unfortunate for uh, SU-129. They did have the momentum, and now it is just going to be Riz out here um, trying to hold and, you know, stay safe. They do have that crab tank, which I do believe we're probably going to see here soon for that defense. Uh, there it goes, uh, trying to, you know, do the best they can. The, uh, the range loss are over here jumping into mid from a teammate spot, which is super interesting. And we're just seeing SV-129, Pinky. We're seeing them try to hold on as best they can um, as White Noise assaults them yet again. Yeah, this range loss are trying to make stuff happen on that right side of the map, trying to just poke at whoever dares to drop. And right now, White Noise is content to just hold the frame maker stalled a little bit, wait for the time to get a push going because they have the jump, they have the easy points. But if they can stay patient and they can wait for their opening, they can get something much more substantial. And this is their chance right now. The crab is gone. The bubbler popped early. And there's only two alive on the side of SP129 to protect it. But the Rainmaker falls in a little ditch. And that's going to really delay their push weave. That's, yeah. Um, They're just kind of content to hold it here. They know that there's, until at least they get further up in, there's not going to be a good chance of them holding it. Now, here they are. Crab thing going out, which is going to get the Rainmaker there. But it's two and two, and uh, you know Ellis from White Noise is still in there at least for a little bit. Jackie, this wipeout is looking pretty good for SB129 here if they can move fast enough. Yeah, exactly. White Noise has a really good push, and it's going to be hard for them to break through. But they're going to have special advantages, so now's their opportunity. Uh, definitely, and you know special advantage. They didn't quite move fast enough to get the paint that they need, it, but uh, Yoshi over here going for the flank yet again is going to just distract this team for long enough. Going for the crab, just skirmishing, getting a pick, almost getting two here. Looks like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this range, really trying to make something happen and does buy enough time for uh, their teammates to get the picks and they are going to be opting to go left, looks like. Yeah, this left side route is not something I would have expected at first, but... It is a much safer zone, you know, we have a lot more cover to go, but right now, SP129 doesn't have a lot of time to play things safe, they kind of have to go, this is their last chance, and they don't have numbers right now, right now it's 2-2, two and two, but the machine gets a nice pick, it's just a ride on the Tetris alive, Tetris are diving, but they get picked off, it's just the machine alive for SB, and everyone is trying to jump desperately into them, but White Noise going to hold onto it just a little bit longer, we've... Henry holding down the fort there for so long. Yoshi's going to be backtracking uh, for safety or perhaps to charge special, depending on uh, actually going on this flank here. They really love their flanks, and it looks like it could be the right play there as they are going to distract the enemy team, holding them off just for a bit longer as they, you know, stall long enough to pop this crab tank. Ten seconds left on the clock before overtime kicks in, and this is looking scary for SV, but it's far, far from over. Uh, all they need to do is get that jump in a little bit further. But they lost the Rainmaker right at the end. They didn't even get a chance to try for an overtime push. Yeah, uh, Pinky, you know, what, what did we see in this game? It was very, very close for a lot of it. Yeah, it was a very, very curious game, I feel like. But White Noise got that jump, and it was just a long time of neutral. But White Noise got another breakaway push down to 15 via that jump again. And, you know, SV129 was not quite able to fully respond. They got close to that left side route, but eventually time ran right out, and... White Noise getting a very sloppy game one, but maybe they're going to try and just use this to get the momentum back, and SP129 is the one that's forced to respond as we go on to game two. Yeah, and it, like, it's far from over. Best of seven, uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer here. We have at least three more games to go like before we're even thinking about a conclusive victory here, so SP129, plenty of time to take it back. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go uh, as we get further and further on into here. See how we pick up some patterns, see how these teams play as they start to figure each other out here. And we are going to move on to our next map mode pretty shortly here, Jackie. Yeah, I, we're looking like we're going to be on Clam Blitz Makomar, I believe. And I, I really like this map. I think it's really interesting. I love how much, or I love how coordinated you need to be to make plays on clan bits especially i think it's a really good team game and make omar really you need to combine your specials well to get any kind of meaningful push oh yeah definitely um just clan in general uh, insane test of coordination insane test of your ability to hold the map and uh i know me and pinky talk a lot about you know make omar being kind of a, a basic uh really test of it's, it's not a gimmicky stage by any means. Uh, do you mind elaborating on that? I, I think that Mako is just... It's a very interesting stage because a lot of these Clamblitz maps, 
is so cent centralized around being so hard to get to that basket. Museum is a prime example, one of the best and most loved clamless maps in this game. It's just so difficult to get to that basket. Mako Mart though is tiny. It's a six second travel time from basket to basket. And because of that, the play around these baskets gets a lot more defensive and a lot more important because if you relinquish any bit of control, the game can spiral out of spiral out of hand so, so quickly. So I think the counterplay around that is just fascinating to observe. Jackie, yeah, let's yeah. talk about these comps real quick. Well, we see the same comp coming from out from SB1, I think from both teams actually, and it's really interesting. They decide, no, we don't want to switch it up. We're going to run it back. And we like what's working right now. Yeah, we see Abrol here already with the crab tank, and the other team member has a crab tank as well, which we see pop shortly. And wow, White Noise is absolutely dominant here, getting three down, fourth is in no position to defend all by themselves, and that is going to be a fast, fast, less than 45 seconds into the game basket break over here. Uh, Pinky, what the heck is going on? I mean, it's like I said, it's six seconds to get from one basket to the other, and if you let go of just your iron grip by your basket for even a second, that basket's gonna pop open, and right now, White Noise is just trying to keep the momentum as best as possible, and they're up three to one. It's just this Junior holding bubble, and that Junior gets picked off for the wipeout, and White Noise setting themselves up for another strong push. Yeah, my god, is White Noise being dominant here? It just feels like SC129 can't get their grip against their super strong, just taking good fights, but uh, actually, as I say that, uh, White Noise does go two down, which does give the SV-29 a little bit of breathing room, and they are going to use that to try to charge their specials and get something set up before it's too late. Ryan, though, pushing in a lot of pressure, but they managed to take it down. They get the ball, the ball in, but there's only one member left on the team. So, they're gonna, so it looks like SV-129 might have a chance to get some map control here. Yeah, yeah. um, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it, but... Yeah, SV129 has really solid defense, couldn't quite stop the ball, but they still won the war at the end of the day. And SV129 is making a strong charge for White Noise's basket, and they break it right then and there. Great, great showing from SV129. Finally getting their stuff together. They are one or two clams away from the lead here, and they're still putting pressure on White Noise. All they need is to keep the basket open and to keep the control, and they are really set here. They are two down now. But they are, you know, in the base still. They haven't given up Miko completely, completely yet. Yoshi still going at it. And the map is painted, you know, pretty pink as, you know, uh, White Noise does get back into the fray here. So it's, uh, it's, we're back in neutral once again, Jackie. Yeah, but, but you might notice White Noise has two crabs up. They're going to look to use those crabs to get an early push. They pop one. Oh, but that's a pick for Riz T. Looks like they're shutting down the aggression from the two crabs pretty well here. Another pick looking beautiful out here um sc129 has basically gotten their bearings now and is starting to figure out how to defend against the really strong aggression of white noise and pinky it's gonna be really interesting to see how this match progresses and how these teams play around each other even more yeah but this play around this right side is important the range is the pick but right now that basket is going to be breaking open once again for White Noise. That's going to be the lead switching once again, but it's not a strong lead. It's a lead of one point. White Noise wants to widen it a little bit more. It's one versus two. It's the range of the splash versus the splash on the side of SB129. That basket is going to stay open a little bit longer. Here comes the power claim from the splash. Trying to get into it. If the power claim makes it to the basket, that would be huge, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But still, White Noise gets the lead back and a push to 31. But you know, Weef, you know they wanted a lot more from that minute and a half left on the clock and things are really tight here i can definitely see sv129 getting another push here especially with these specials that they're popping out and the clam economy that is massively in their favor orion goes dives in to an unfavorable situation and manages to scrape a trade out of it um doing what tetras do best and jackie it's gonna be uh looks like you know sv129 is starting to approach the goal here yeah, but they just went two. To, oh, it's two v two now, so it's pretty even on the on the board. Except you'll notice SV one twenty nine has a lot more clams. They might be able to get a push in here. Yeah, I was uh, basically a wipe here. Oh, these jumps are going to be so unfortunate. Picky goes out. These super clam goes in. Cra uh, crabs are at the ready, and it looks like they're so so close to getting the lead here. But unfortunately, they do go three down, and now they only have about forty five seconds to get the lead back. Um or not even get it back, to get another push started and push, uh, you know, about 20 or so points here. Not looking good for them, but it is certainly possible. It's never over until it's over, over Pinky. 
Yeah, but SP129, that was so tragic for them. They had all the clams they needed, but their clam carries just went down. The machine stayed alive, but the machine had no clams to speak of, and that was really disappointing for SP129. And now Wide Noise has that basket broken open again, widening that lead a little bit more. They get it to 27, and that's going to be the wipeout. Wide Noise still has this basket open, going back for a few more clams, just trying to keep it open, just trying to stop this overtime. 18 points, 3 seconds until overtime, and they just have to throw one more clam in that basket, and that's going to... Do it, White Noise, up 2-0 over SV129. What a game there. Things were so, so close for so long. And even though White Noise is coming out on top in these first two matches, they, uh, you know, SV129 is proving that they do have what it takes to beat White Noise. They just have to get a little bit more. They just have to push a little bit harder. And Jackie, what do you think we're going to see from these teams? Uh, who, who's going to come out on top on Brimewater Springs? And what are well, they going to run? <laughs> well, we've seen a really good back and forth between both teams, and their comps have stayed the same. So I'm guessing we're going to see another double crab, but we might see a backliner coming out since Brian Water Springs is really good with long range weapons that can, you know, see basically the entire map all just from one area. Yeah, it's insane. But uh, yeah, crab tank's going to be strong here. Uh, backlines are going to be strong here. If either team opts to run it, we haven't seen it, but. Uh, Biggie, what are your thoughts on this uh, suspiciously Tetris-shaped piece uh, map? Uh, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Tetris personally. I've never been super great at it. Um, so, you know, my thoughts on seeing Tetris being brought over to Splatoon weren't super positive initially, but Brinewater definitely plays out more interestingly than some of the other more, shall we say, infamous examples of the Tetris piece uh, map philosophy because it does have those flanks on the left and right-hand side. It has a lot of similar aspects to Inkblot, it's just very, very shrunk together, which makes maneuvering kind of awkward, but, I mean, once you get good enough at this movement, this map becomes very satisfying to move around in. Yeah, and um, I think that it's going to be a really back-and-forth game here, as I predict that these teams are going to get mid and immediately start rushing to get a lockout, and I feel like it's going to go back and forth with some big pushes. But uh, Jackie, once again, we're going to we're going to see what these guys run and how they play and how they open up. Ooh, Ooh okay, okay we have the VDS of, for White Noise, and we have the Gal and the Custom Junior for SB129. So they decide to mix it up, both still running the double crowd. Yeah, um, Double Crab just incredibly powerful on this map. The 52 going to be a really defensive here, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how these two duelies play off each other. But right now, White Noise is two down, and this looks like it could be an advantage coming out for SB129. What, Pinky, what do you think? I mean, it was interesting to see how these duelies played off each other, but they both immediately died together, and that made things really awkward for White Noise opening up, but they have control back now. SB129 has the Crab painting over that zone, though. The zone is still in favor of White Noise, but the specials on the side of SP129 are coming out, and it's going to be enough. Ryan trying to get this one duel, but it actually loses the splash. That's really bad for them, and Henry moving far forward with the splash matic and giving SP129 a lot of momentum at the beginning of this match. Yeah, um, that is the lead going to SP129, but not for long as they do go two down. It's two on two on both sides, though, and it looks like there is still enough players in mid that is not going to either side. Jackie, uh, how are we going to see these players break out of mid, especially with these, you know, players jumping out? It looks like um, it's now SP129's turn to go uh, push yet again. Yeah, SP129 definitely has the special advantage here, but White Noise popping crab, you know, going to move back in. They have Wave Breaker out as well, so they might be able to get a couple picks and then recap the zone here, which they, oh, they do, and it works great for them. It will, but it's looking awfully purple right now, and especially with that pick that they just got, the Wave Breaker's going to go out putting a lot of pressure. It could easily flip back, but it's only the junior now, which puts them in a pretty precarious situation. They don't want to, they don't want to die, but they don't want to give up so much map control that White Moses is just going to come flooding in. But come flooding in, they will regardless, and this is going to be where this lockout heavy stage, Pinky, comes into a fetch. Yeah, but right now, White Noise not quite getting the momentum that we were expecting, that we've been seeing throughout this entire tournament, you know. They have not dropped a game once in this tournament, but they just cannot seem to get situated and get comfortable against SB129 on this map. And Yoshi already back by the street of White Noise, just trying to just cause as much mayhem as possible and just be as annoying as possible as the zone timer takes through its penalty and things are looking rough for White Noise in this game. 
uh, Orion gets a trade with one of the splashes from SB129, and the two members are down SB129, but it's uh, they're still trying to hold it out best they can. Do zone does go to White Noise, Jackie, but it's far from over, and they still have a bit of penalty and points to chew through before they take the lead back. Yeah, exactly. We see the Custom Junior with the Wave Breaker waiting for another special to maybe combo it with. We pop the Gal special as well, so maybe this is their time. They're trying to push back in. Yep, we see the Wave Breaker from both teams. And they're both going to try and work at each other until we can maybe see a zone recapture here. That's yeah, a great um, pick for SP129 as well. That is going to be the lead going to White Noise. But with two of the members down, it could, uh, like we see here, go to their favor. Newly Squelchers on the zone trying to, you know, take anything out. But they didn't quite realize, it seems, that none of their friends were there to back them up. And now we're going to see if these teams take advantage of the space they created and or are just going to try to hold. They only have, you know, about five or so seconds before they take lead back if they can just hold on for a little bit longer. That reslider is going to come on, paint the zone, and force people off. Making the zone go to white noise yet again, Pinky. This has uh, really been back and forth so far. Yeah, white noise just got that clutch of the lead, and right now, now they're starting to get set up. Now they're starting to have that ball rolling in their favor. They're getting set up on that ramp, and they're almost through their penalty once again. If they can continue to push down through the 30s, things are going to be looking rough for SB129. White Noise are already up 2-0 in this best of seven series, and they do not want to let them go up any further. SB129 has to respond, but White Noise just suffocating them. Four versus two, it's three versus one. It's just the junior alive for SB129, and White Noise getting dangerously close to getting this knockout here, and SB129 is so far from this zone weave, it's incredibly difficult to make this happen for them. 10 seconds left, uh, two members down on White Noise, oh. and it's going to be the zone recapture for SB2129, but we're going to see if they are going to be able to snowball this into a lead recapture, or if that's going to be it. Uh, yeah, SB... so... yeah. Sorry, if SB129 wants to get in this game, it might have, it looks like it's going to have to end up going into overtime, so we'll see if they can manage to get back the zone before the game ends. As we are approaching match point here, SG129 wants them to win more and more, and they might start to take some risky plays as they, you know, really want to win this match. Um, it looks like we have a massive scuffle on the left side of the map here. Crab going out, catchers and the junior and the splash of the enemy team going out, but the crab prevails as it always does in this meta, and that's going to be SV129 encroaching on the points. It's starting to look scary for White Noise, and they really, really don't want to go into overtime here. Yeah, but SV129. Only has the splash oh. alive though. It's a, it's one versus three. I don't think they're gonna be able to solve the zone by themselves. That's the wipeout. White noise. It looks scary for them, but they got three down in the eleventh hour. And white noise up three zero and at tournament point. Close yeah, that game is. As well. Oh my, this is looking really really rough for SV one twenty nine, but this has been three incredibly close games in a row. They only need to have close the gap by a little bit if they want to take this. And so we're going to see if they do manage to take it back here. As uh, as Pinky said, match point, tournament point, whoever lead, uh, whoever wins this gets that shiny, shiny Sendo badge. But uh, we're going to see how these teams fare on map number four, which we're going to... Oh, scoot over, scoot over. Huh? Oh, almost there, almost there, almost there. Almost there. Oh, oh, you're gonna there. Tower control, tower, tower control. control. Yeah. Yay! Good map mode, good map mode. What are your guys' and, thoughts? Well, museum for the third time today. So, we've seen a lot of museum, and we've almost got every single mode in it. We're really liking the map so far. All of the games that we've seen in the museum have been really fun to watch. Yeah, museum is just a fun map in general. It it favors a lot of different play styles. Uh, you can make a, a lot of stuff work on it, but it still does favor crab and long range weapons pretty ser uh, pretty seriously. We haven't seen any of the longer range weapons come out, so I, I'm just it's gonna be double crab all the way down here. Uh, I can almost guarantee it. Uh, Piggy, how does this map play generally? I mean, <laughs> this map plays pretty much how would you expect it to, in my opinion just that second checkpoint choke point by that platform is so crucial and if you can break through that with enough momentum if you can break that with a numbers advantage spiral out of control oh so quickly but until then it's a neutral in mid and just vying for any sort of control you can get until that second checkpoint comes it's a very tricky map but very balanced and i mean it's it's just museum in a nutshell and it's tower control in a nutshell that's kind of what it boils down to yeah but a good map with a good mode um 
I mean, power control, crazy special advantage. We're just gonna we're see how teams just play around that kind of stuff here. Jackie, for uh, potentially one last time, let's look at these comps. Ooh, we have the Zinc Mini. I'm glad to see April back on it. And we have a little bit of a different comp from SP129. We have the V Shot. We're gonna use the, uh, I, I forget, what's the name of the special? The Trizuka? Yeah, we're gonna see the Trizuka nice. coming out and maybe stop some of those tower pushes. We do see White Noise already going one down. SP129, uh, it's starting to take an advantage, but that's uh, two down on their side as well. It looks like April's about to hop on this tower and start to see what they can do, pushing all the way up onto SP129's plot, wasting no time. Pinky, it's not looking good for SP129 so far as the range lash is already in there, the tension's already in there. Crazy yeah, stuff. This, this is an incredibly strong map mode for range, in my humble opinion. And White Noise has proven it. They're making a charge for that second checkpoint. They're gonna, they're so close to breaking it. And they're gonna do it just about. Yeah, there it is, breaking that second checkpoint in the first minute. That's a bubble on tower. White Noise cannot be stopped right now. SB129 is just trying their best, but Ella is shredding that crab. That crab's gonna go down. Four versus two up for White Noise. This is an incredible position for them in the tournament, and they're at the third checkpoint here and now. It's still four versus two. They're still staggered, and White Noise uncontested pretty much gets the knockout and the tournament dub incredible game for white noise taking one push all the way to the end coordinating their specials beautifully and getting the, the solid victory guys i can't wait for game four to start wait it's already over what it's <laughs> what over already what blink and you miss it uh white noise absolutely wasting zero time uh that was insane uh they got the picks, they followed up on the picks, they used their specials. Textbook. It was absolutely textbook. Uh, you guys have any any statements on that? White Noise <laughs> won under pressure Krill Streak without dropping a game. Wait, actually they didn't drop a single game? Not one. Wow. Definitely impressive. Call that a Krill Streak, am I right? Uh, that was, I mean, that was free. Yeah, no, um, absolutely amazing show from them uh proving why they placed so highly in looty uh i mean i don't think anyone doubted that they deserved it but uh here's your proof i mean it is what it is here going home uh proving the the champions at uh single elim i don't know getting that shiny uh shiny sendo badge uh that is so highly sought after uh but yeah that's gonna be it for tonight I also want to give props to SP129 for putting up a really good fight in those first three games the last set. Really try hard, really close, and it was a fun set to watch even though it went 4-0. Yeah, um, that, like, like, uh, yeah, except for that last game, they, like, they were all so back and forth. Uh, last game barely happened. I, I don't think anyone mentally processed that one, but... I mean, that's what happens if your mental starts to crumble. If you're kind of accepting, like, okay, it's match point, they've beat this into the ground, the other three... It, it can affect you, but uh, they, you know, held strong through most of it, and uh, obviously through most of their side of the bracket as well, so, I mean, for what it's worth, they did a very good job. Yeah, not enough props can be given to these teams. SB129, absolutely incredible roster, played so well today, absolutely deserved second place, but White Noise just coming out on top, just playing incredibly well, and they're a team to look out for in the coming months and they might establish them with a new top threat who knows yeah very sad that quantum had to drop that would have been also an amazing match to watch uh ripped power <laughs> <laughs> ripped, but well, we might power. see them next time as they as they go in pursuit of the funny funny badge um anyway <laughs> that is gonna be <laughs> it from us from the on the tricast desk i had a fantastic time pinky where can the people find you and jackie pinky first then jackie well, you know, thanks for thanks for asking me to go first. You guys can find me at twitter.com, at brokenpinky underscore. But uh, Jackie, leading it to you, where can the people find you? Well, I don't know. Usually, like, a, a, maybe a tree in the local park. That's where I would recommend looking first. Otherwise, kind of hard to find me. Awesome. Elusive. Um, as for me, you can find me on both Twitter and Twitch at WeefSlider. Uh, certified Weef Secret, I might be going live in like 30 seconds after I get off the mic. So, uh, wink wink, nudge nudge. 
uh, uh-huh. at Weave Slider, like Reef Slider, but with a W. That is uh, twitch.tv slash Weave Slider. I repeat, twitch.tv slash Weave Slider. Um, but anyway, that was a fantastic time. Thank you for putting up with all of our very, very serious shenanigans. <laughs> Um, we will, uh, yeah, see you guys, uh, eventually, I don't know. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. Bye!